Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Sorry for the slightly late start, having some technical difficulties. Um, hopefully everything looks and sounds good. I don't know, sometimes my OBS is just like, no, we're, we don't like, it. we're not gonna save your presets anymore. Like, I <laughs> just reset all of them. I don't know why it does that sometimes. <laughs> welcome. Awesome. Okay, it seems like you guys are here. Oh my God, we get Kojiro's POV today. Ah, the best boy. It's like, well, I was like, well, he is already kind of creepy, but I feel like it's going to be more like finding out reasons why we should hate him or something. <laughs> Honestly, maybe my camera was kind of messed up. It was like, I don't know. I swear, like I set it up every time, but it just like, so it was just like slightly moves a little bit till I'm like slightly out of frame. Ah, uh, thank you, Kev. Thanks for uh, donating and thanks for stopping by the stream. The Weebs is live. Oh, that kind of reminds me. I wonder if my dono thing's gonna work now that everything else reset. Probably not, sad. Thank you for stopping by, I appreciate ya. Oh my God, yes, I'm totally, oh my God, I'm totally gonna go feral over Koji today. <laughs> Koji, Koji, oh my gosh. Uh, is, I think I saw Jeff here too. I know he's also gonna be, He's gonna be with me. He's gonna be with me going absolutely feral. Also, we might actually finish the game today, I believe. Or at least according to my mods, we might um, finish. Cause I think we have like four more hours left. I think it just kind of depends on how like slow or fast I go through this game, I guess. I talk a lot, so that's the only, that's the only thing that kind of makes me wonder, will we get through it today? Oh, thank you, Kyoko Kirigiri. Koji Koji did nothing wrong. That is so true. It's literally, quite literally the Misa Misa of this game. He even has like the little nickname too. Oh man. Oh yeah, Aoi was on the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, on the like uh, loading screen, or not the loading screen, like the title screen. I noticed that too. I was like, okay, she's gonna join us too, I guess. All of a sudden, I was like, she's the only one who really hasn't done anything wrong yet, I don't think. I feel like everybody else has been kind of quite... Oh, wait, uh, what's his face, too? Uh, Shinya. Shinya is a pure boy as well. Oh, thank you, Minty. I'm scared. Quick, comfy check for everyone. Oh, God, for real. Uh, I'm also scared, too, especially since we're, like, kind of getting towards the end of this game. God, God only knows. God only knows what's gonna happen after last stream. It's like, oh god, I wonder. Thank you, Aho girl. Koji, 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 Koji. Uh, I feel you. I feel you, honestly. Oh, Tomoe Harm Cold, also based, based. Tomoe, Tomoe is the best girl. I, f I freaking love Tomoe, dude. She's awesome. But yeah, definitely comfy check for this game because it's about, it's about to get uncomfy real quick. I try to reflect on life every morning. Keeps me grounded, keeps my mind busy. I like how his apartment looks like it's owned by a serial killer. <laughs> it's got like a million cups of coffee. Then just like one outfit. A busy mind is a happy mind. I like to assess myself like I'm judging my own life. Kojiro, 34. Not much more to me than my name. Done a lot of things. A lot of things I regret. Oh God, don't worry. Don't worry, baby, I can fix you. Lots of things I don't. I'm happy overall, in a better place than I was a year ago. Stable job, small group of friends, couple of hobbies. Enough to live a satisfying life. I've got ambitions, desires, passions, and fears. Who doesn't? I'm clever, at least in my own opinion. I speak a little French. Okay, okay. A lot of Japanese, English not so much. Oh yeah, he did speak French, uh, I think on the date with Noriko. Daddle, what's gonna happen with Noriko? Is she just like, should we just like send her off to like, I don't know. Like, uh, she probably didn't need to go to like, uh, I don't know, like a mental facility or something, honestly. Like, okay, I gotta take over and become corpse girl cause uh, Noriko, she's, she's kinda lost it a little bit. Dad always told me girls like multilingual guys haven't proven. Oh, you have not seen the chat. The girls, the guys, everyone loves you, Koji. The they's everyone. Been a while since I was in a relationship. And she never cared for my second second language. There's someone new I'm interested in. She's strange, dark, deep fucking psycho. Le like me. She doesn't get me though, but I get her. I understand. Okay, he's given he's given some yandere vibes here. But I get her. I understand everything about her. Maybe she'll come around, maybe not. 
That's probably enough self-reflection. <laughs> That's probably enough self-reflection for today. I get caught up sometimes. Easy to slip too far inside my own, my own dark brain. He's giving me like 15 year old emo phase. Like this is like the kind of talks I'd have myself too. Like I'm just so dark, like, you know, like I'm just different. Like <laughs> I'm so dark and mysterious. And the guy like too, he's also so dark. Like his mind's just like a void, you know, just like me. Got things to do today. Gotta listen to Linkin Park and MCR. Deliveries to make. The boss is cracking the whip. I like also low-key think his ex-girlfriend was just like a corpse. He gives he gives me those vibes. He seems so weird. Waiting for this uh, waiting for the saws in his inner thoughts. Honestly, me too. I've already eaten breakfast. That's one thing off my to-do list. Might need a coffee though. It should have time to stop by the cafe. Bro, do you not own a trash can? Like, you know you can throw this stuff away, right? I grab my keys, phone, wallet, and book for the train ride. Later. Okay. Okay, I guess he's just talking to me. Wow. So respectful. It's like, who the hell is he talking to? His coffee cups? Later. Later, coffee chan. Oh, thank you. Moo Moo Decal. Didn't get to say this last stream, so I'm saying it now. There's a reason Katomi is just a boss <laughs> and not a girl boss. That, dude, that is so true. We have to draw the distinction. She's just a boss. Oh, God, I'm so fucking happy she died, too. God, that was so good. Thank you for the dono. And thank you, Jay Soul. Hi, Weeby. I watch your dog and rapper playthroughs all the time. And I'm so glad I finally caught up to a live stream. Hope you enjoy the game. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this game, too. It's been been quite quite a wild ride so far, for sure. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Later. Have a mind to say goodbye to empty rooms. Used to be funny in my school. Was it? Was it funny in my school days? Not so funny anymore, but it's stuck with me. I find it hard to break habits. I leave the apartment behind. It occurs to me that it might be the last time. Okay. Probably not, but a possibility. Just always worrying about death. My mind always thinks of such things. Always prepared for the worst. Maybe just like anxiety. Loki, that's me too. Like, it would be like a perfectly normal day and I'll be like leaving my room and I'm like, I may never come back. <laughs> it's like super dramatic. Benefit of living near the train station is not having to walk far, but the noise pierces my apartment. I've learned to sleep through it. <clears throat> the platform is quiet today. Must have been in the rush. Going straight to the factory today. The blonde girl will drive from there. Tomo, uh, how can you forget best girl's name? Toma, Toma way. Always on the tip of my tongue. I like the factory. Spent a lot of time there with dad. Oh, Jesus. He worked hard, but he always had time for me. But the factory is different now. Colder. Reminds me too much of the morgue. Not surprising, though. Not since Noriko made it her home. She calls it the Corpse Factory. <laughs> Get it, guys? The title. Roll credits. Not a fan of the name. I like morbid things, but you know, just it's a little too much when you add factory with it. I like corpses and factories, but together, nah, man. Too far. The factory meant a lot to me. Now it means nothing. It's just a place I go. I still see dad there sometimes. I picture him working away. I know he's not really there, just in my mind, remembering better times. I wonder what happened with his dad. I miss him a lot. I kind of wonder if we'll get like a full explanation, because we didn't really get one for Noriko. We just kind of got like bits and pieces. I guess you can kind of piece together her childhood for the most part. Like her mom had an ED. Her sister, ugh, gosh, Noriko was super bullied in school by Emmy. And then also her sister, it seemed like too. So I guess we might just kind of get bits and pieces until we can piece it together. You know what I mean? I miss him a lot. Hope he's proud of me. He's like from the, from hell. He's like, you're fucking weirdo, Kojiro. Why do you like putting makeup on corpses so much, you fucking nerd? Okay. Hey, can you help me load up? Yeah. The blonde girl standing by a flatbed trolley. It's piled high with four cadavers. Each one is sealed in an HRP. I take the trolley and steer it towards our van. The back door is already open. A quick peek inside reveals Noriko is not <laughs> is not hiding within again. Okay. I hoist the first cadaver off the trolley and load it in the van. Are we gonna see what happened to her? The second one follows, then the third. I wipe a trickle of sweat from my brow. Hot today. I should take my coat off. Yes, yes you should, Koji, Koji. Take your coat off. Come on, do it. Do it for us. Do it for the fanboys, the fangirls, the fan days. We need it. Maybe later. Oh, he's just gonna leave us. He's gonna leave us wanting. Not one more cadaver on the trolley. Into the van it goes. Just gonna be me. It's gonna be me simping the whole the whole entire story arc for him. 
Loyalty? <laughs> the power of love. Yeah, right. She means a lot to me. Even if I don't mean much to her. I don't think anyone means much to her anymore. Uh. You might be right. I look straight at the girl, not the type I'd normally associate with. Girls like her usually think I'm a freak or not normal. She did. She did think that. But we've gotten to know each other a little. Wouldn't call her a friend yet. Are you still hanging around? I don't know. All this shit freaked me out from the start, but it's weird. Feels like we're achieving something, you know? Yeah. Even if it ain't right. <laughs> Even if it's not right, it's totally fucked up. It feels like I got a purpose now. Purpose. <laughs> I can't count how many people have died because of us. The last month has been wild, but I don't even lose sleep over it anymore. Neither. <laughs> God, Tomoe. Turning, turning to the dark side. I never did. Figures. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably gonna go to hell. <laughs> oh my goodness. See you there, girly. Hell. You know, for all the bad shit I've been doing. Even if I'm not actually killing people, I'm still enabling it. Don't you ever think we're gonna go to hell? Don't believe in the place. Yeah, I was like, Kojiro didn't really seem like the type. Oh, voice level a bit higher? Um, is it okay for most of you guys? Let me... Let me see, actually. We'll just do on the options menu. The voice level... I'll just put the music and the effects down. Maybe. And then... I can raise this up a little bit. Okay, I'll try this for a little bit, and you guys can let me know if, uh, if it's good. I never used to, but... Is that better? Let me... I think it's the whole game that it's a little low this time. Okay. Let me just turn it up. Just been thinking lately. That's all. But between this and working at the office part-time... Okay, that seems like it might be good. I can send some decent cash to my kid brother and sister, you know? Uh. Now that Noriko's paying us anyway. You're getting paid? Oh shit. <laughs> You're not? <laughs> Lamal. Joking. I'm getting paid. Okay, I thought that was real for a second. I was like, I guess it makes sense she's paying them. I was like, why else would they want to do this just for the the power trip? Whew. Ah, uh, that would have been awkward. The girl yawns and shuffles on the spot. She looks back to the factory. The roller door at the loading dock is wide open. Bring the trolley? Okay. She walks away. I grab the trolley and wheel it back to the loading dock. I abandon the trolley and step inside the factory. Okay, it seems like uh, it's better. It looks pretty good on my end, too. Yeah. The, uh, oh my god. It really is a corpse factory now. Holy shit. So many of them. What the fuck are you doing to these, Koji, too? I want to find that out as well, you, you psycho. I make my way to the futon lying on the cold concrete floor. It's a worn out thing. Frayed fabric, torn edges. Lying on top of it, covered by a thin blanket, is the girl of my dreams. Huh? Oh. What time is it? Okay, so she's just literally living here now. That'll that'll help her calm down and not go crazy. What a great job. What a great job, you guys. Having her live in an abandoned factory with corpses surrounding her. That'll definitely make her sane again. Time to get up. Oh, come on. Got work to do. Aww. How many deliveries today? Ask the other girl. I'm just the muscle. I reach my hand out to her, same way I do every morning. She, she never takes it. That is so sad. Instead, she slowly climbs to her feet without assistance. She's still wearing yesterday's clothes, yesterday's makeup, yesterday's sweat. Okay, this might just be like the day after it happened, actually. She's gorgeous. When are you going back home? This is my home now. <laughs> you need a shower. Yeah. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Oh, thank you, David. I just saw a dumpster full of watches. Oh, what a waste of time. But mom Ching, honestly, we need that palate cleanser after <laughs> after playing this game or while playing this game. Thank you, David. Appreciate the dono. My place smells terrible, like rotting flesh. Uh, <laughs> this place smells better, girly. I can't get the odor out. It's been getting worse since I first moved in there. This place smells too. Look at what's around you. I gesture towards the rack of cadavers that fill the factory. Oh, cool, the thing worked this time. 
We acquired some warehouse racking some time ago. It didn't take long for us to fill most of the shelves with cadavers. The industrial air conditioner we installed staves off the decay for a while, but not long enough. We try not to let each cadaver remain here for more than a few days. How did you install an industrial level air conditioner? It's like imagine them hiring like some random dude to install it. <laughs> yeah, put it over there. Don't, don't look at the body bags or anything though. There's nothing going on in there. Sometimes we forget and it's just so cold here all the time. It's not like dad's factory at all. The stench can make anyone's eyes water. We just seem to be, we just seem to be getting used to it. He's got severe dad issues. I like it here. The smell here is different. It's nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. You probably have requests to work on. Uh, I'll leave you be. Rico doesn't say anything. A thoughtful expression covers her face. I make my way back towards the trolley. We've been overwhelmed with work lately. Seems like Corpse Girl's website has become the next big trend in Japan. Dozens of requests pour in every day. A lot of people are one and dead. I don't care about the reasons why. I just do the work. It, it's all for Noriko. He's really into her. Like, it, they haven't really known each other for that long. Is he, like, stalking her or something beforehand? Or, like, did he just, like, was, like, aware of her or something? I don't know. It's a little, it's a little weird how into her he is. Couldn't care less about Corpse Girl's ambitions or whatever she normally says. I still feel like the way they met was super weird. It was like he already knew her interests and stuff, too. I want to prove to her that I'm useful. Good. Worthy. This is the only way I can think of to earn her love. I told her I was doing it for corpses. He really is a Misa, Jesus Christ. Wanted to get my hands on some for myself, but that was a lie, all of it. But why would I need her to acquire corpses? I work at the fucking morgue. That's what I was wondering too. I was like, I don't even remember how this made sense. I've been stealing them for years. Oh Jesus, just need her to believe she can motivate me. Bargain with me, control me. When she achieves her goal, whatever it may be, I'll talk to her. A heart to heart. It's like, <laughs> it's the conclusion him gonna be murdering her at this point. Like, he is so yandere, and I don't even think she likes men. Maybe. Oh, God. God, she... God, just... let's, let's reel it back a little bit, bro. <laughs> let's pull it back in. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you that I think she might be a lesbian. <laughs> Maybe I'll even propose. Jesus Christ, this is going to end up with us murdering her. Can't let a girl like her slip away. She's too precious, too beautiful, too brooding, too macabre. And, and, I need her. It's as simple as that. Since the first time I laid eyes on her over a year ago, that day she... Okay, so he had. Okay, this is. It's all starting to come together. It's all starting to come together. Boy! Jesus Christ, Kojiro. Can you just propose to me or the chat instead? We we love you and we can. We can't. Probably can't fix you, but we at least believe we can. The day she moved into our apartment, I've kept close by ever since. You know, it, got my, it might make sense too why he had like coffee in his room. Cause I knew she was like super obsessed with coffee too. It's like, is he just like, I don't know, getting coffee too, like every time she gets coffee so he can like, you know, pretend he has a reason to go to the coffee shop. Maybe, I don't know. I must, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I must have her. I will have her, oh my God. I'll t <laughs> oh my God. I had a feeling this was gonna reveal his crazy. I mean, we already knew he was off, but it, it's really, it's really coming out, dude. Thank you, in our China Twenty Rose. Koji fight over Weeby and Jeff. I'll take Nori. <laughs> Does Jeff want him anymore? Is it just me now? I see the chat already. Like, I don't know if I want him. <laughs> you can have him, Weeby. I'll do anything for Noriko. Okay, King. <laughs> Physical labor always makes me hungry. A normal human trait, I would assume. What would he, what would he think too if he like found out that she was in love with Aoi? Would he like kill her? Is that what this might turn into? I take a seat at the restaurant, a police in place in order. Once the waitress arrives, waiting for a meal is boring. I decide to read. Oh God, it's gonna be one of his weird ass creepy books. 
Today's book is Foss Photography. I borrowed it from Noriko. She doesn't know. That means I stole it. Oh, it smells like her. When I flip open the cover, I'm reminded of why I started coming here. <laughs> He's so fucking weird. I once saw Noriko here at this very same restaurant. She was eating Oma rice and reading Strange Flower. I was like, how much did he see, man? She didn't need much. Three mouthfuls, if I recall correctly. I was taking notes. But she read her book until the restaurant closed. Yeah, he probably does know about Aoi. I just wasn't sure if he realized that she was in love with her, you know what I mean? I can't remember if she really, like, admitted that, like, uh, vocally before. Because it was mostly in her mind where she was, like, you know, obsessing and stuff. I learned then that she's a girl that would rather feed her mind than her body. I'm personally the opposite. I love to eat. But I find Noriko's traits endearing. It's hard not to fall for someone in love with educating herself. It's all. It also touched my heart that she chose to read the book that I lent her. Come to think of it, I never did get that back from her. It's probably overdue at the library now. Maybe I shouldn't show my face there again. Add it to the list of places I can't visit anymore. My meal arrives. Oma rice, the same thing that she ordered. I dig in. It's tasty. I assume this is Noriko's favorite. Friendly enough. It was dad. Oh my god. She must be my dad, but reincarnated. Slay. Funnily enough, it was dad's favorite too. I devour the dish in a few minutes. I'd like to lick the plate clean. Always earn Earns a funny look from the staff. Oh wait, this is um. Wait, if I had, if if this had been a game we played before, we would have been having the time of my life voicing these Kojiro lines. I could, I could see that it's pretty fucking fun for me too, honestly. The heat from the meals fogged my glasses. You? Oh whoa! Oh no! Oh no! It's, I know you, you fucking psychopath. I got a restraining, or my wife got a restraining on you last year. No, that, that's someone different. Thanks to my natural blurry vision, I can't see who sits down across from me. I quickly return my glasses to their rifle place. Oh, Jimbo, right? Oh, it is this guy. I was kind of wondering. Okay. It's all, it's all coming together. Kojiro. I don't think so. Trust me. We ever gonna learn this guy's name? You are? Junpei Matsumoto. Oh, yeah, Junpei. Duh, that's what his name. How could I forget? Jumpy. The Rotund. Rotund stranger offers his hand to me. I don't reciprocate the gesture. Can I help you? Nah, man. Just hang it, you know? I need to double check something. My camera is still working, right? Okay, cool. Just made like a weird sound for a second. Okay, sweet. Saw you here. Wanted to say, what's up? He probably loves this guy, honestly. He's like, thank God you took Owie. What's up? <laughs> what's up? I don't know you. I'll be going. Stay a while. Let's talk about Corpse Girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, is this guy gonna be psycho too? A stranger's words prevent me from standing up. I glare at him. What about Corpse Girl? She's killed a lot of people, right? Like a hell of a lot of people. Another, another fanboy? Probably. I don't know. Come on, man. You're in her crew. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Does Owie know? And she was like, let me spill the tea, Junpei. <laughs> Junpei. I've seen you lifting at the morgue. You run that white piece of shit van. <laughs> you know I mean, I guess they are kind of obvious about it, though, too. It was like, it wouldn't be that hard, I feel like, to track down where the corpses are coming from. And it's like, does anybody else work at the morgue besides him? I don't. Careful now. If I can find you, it can't be that hard for the cops to pinch you. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the crazy eyes, too. What do you want? I guess it. Just wanted to say what's up. Uh, what's up? The foul man leans across the table as hot breath reeks more than the factory. I want to know how you guys do it. How do you get up every morning knowing that there's a killer out there even more powerful and successful than Corpse Girl? And it's me. And it's me. Jesus Christ. I know exactly what he's referring to. I try not to let my face betray me. Is it the person that did like the, uh, you know, the copycat? Is he doing the copycats? Or maybe him and like Owie are working together to do the copycats. It's true that Corpse Girl has some tough competition. Around the time Noriko, yeah, targeted her sister. Somebody hacked Corp Girl's, Corpse Girl's website. Oh, it probably was this guy who hacked the website. He's got like a Wi-Fi uh, hat on. Ever since then, a new string of deaths have raged across Tokyo like wildfire. Deaths not caused by Corpse Girl. Oh my god, are we fighting for Death Cloud? I want to be Kira. No, I want to be Kira. 
It started off with a copycat killer stealing Noriko's request. People that were sentenced to death via Corpse Girl's website were found dead before we could even reach them. But that didn't last long. Oh, fun fact, this guy is voiced by the same dude as, as Moma Kuma, Kumakura from AI, Yasuhira, and Ganta from Danganronpa. Okay, I kind of did think he sounded familiar. I was wondering that too. I thought uh, I saw, I think it was Jeff also mentioned that maybe he had the voice of Yasuhiro. I can definitely hear it. Thanks for the dono, appreciate ya. But that didn't last long. <laughs> After a while, completely unrelated people were being found dead across the city. People whose deaths had never been requested through the website. Because of that, we stopped worrying about it. Noriko was happy as long as her own victims weren't being poached. She didn't care if someone else was running a similar operation as long as they kept their hands off of her prey. I haven't given it much thought since. And then this guy appears out of freaking nowhere. It's pretty damn obvious that he's been involved with a copycat killer. He's seen me around, knows what I've been doing, knows there are two separate powers out there killing. Yeah, he's definitely teaming up with Aoi, right? Doesn't take much to figure him out. It seemed like Aoi, too, she was like... She, like, admired Corpse Girl, at the very least. And she had people she wanted to get rid of, so, you know, you see? What's your method? Excuse me? I like how Aoi didn't date actual Corpse Girl, but she just moved on to, like... I don't know, like, Fedora... <laughs> Fedora Corpse Boy. You kill faster than Corpse Girl. How? Whoa there, buddy. I don't kill anyone. Here, check this shit. Uh, um, the Human Removal Service. We remove unwanted human beings. Take advantage of our free and efficient removal solutions. Film the name and the address of a human being you would like removed. The guy shows me his phone. There's a web page on the screen. Oh, maybe he just hacked and then he was like requesting the same deaths on there. It looks similar to Corpse Girl's website, but it's not the same. Where's the cute little Kazuna sprite? I read the name of the site out loud. The Human Removal Service. Nice, huh? What is this? Just read it. <laughs> Just an off-brand of uh, Corpse Girl. I do as I'm told. There's a paragraph of information below the site's title. We remove unwanted human beings. Take advantage of our free and efficient removal solutions. Fill the name and the address of the human being you'd like to be removed. Following that text is a form to be filled out, just like the one on Corpse Girl's website. I think I get it. This is the copycat's own website. Why is it different colored? I was kind of wondering that, because some of the words are like different colors. Like, uh, I think like noise might be like purple. Is it purple? Am I just a Lulu? <laughs> there was one that was like yellow earlier. They are running an identical operation, accepting user requests for victims' details and somehow carrying out killings. But how far do the similarities extend? Are they creating corpse photos to send to victims? Are they forcing victims to kill themselves or carrying out premeditated murder? Are they delivering corpses to victims? You involved with this? Nah, just a fan. Used to be a corpse girl fanboy. Oh. That shit was wild. Oh my god. And now you know I've moved on. Then I discovered this site. It's so much cooler. More profesh, you know? The guy leans in once more. Yeah, Corpse Girl definitely is a lot catchier. Much better marketing, much better branding for Corpse Girl. The guy leans in once more. I even used this site once. Oh, fuck. What happened? The guy I wanted to die, he disappeared off the face of the planet within 24 hours. Can you believe it? And they're offering the service for free. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. This guy is involved with the copycat and this website. It's just coming up to him and be like, wow, isn't he so much cooler? On this other website is so much more awesome than Corpse Squirrel. But I'm not involved in it or anything, you know. He's here to taunt me, pressure me. He knows who I am. But what's his end game? Can I try the site? Sure, man. Type the web address into your phone. I retrieve my fro phone from my pocket and enter the site's address. It loads quicker. Quickly, the human removal service. I bookmark the site and scroll down to fill the name Was field. It Matsumoto? Uh, <laughs> Slay, Koji! Slay! Oh my god, I love him. I have no choice but to stick. <laughs> Fucking put his. Put Jumpy's name in there. Do it. Fucking do it. You know, it's like, wow, Junpei, he, will, he really went through a lot after 999. You know, it's like, he's really gone downhill. <laughs> I guess you know what's traumatizing for him having to go through that whole death game thing, but it's like, come on, come on, Jumpy. I know you're better than this. Yes. 
I'm dead. I type in Junpei Matsumoto. The next field requires an address. <laughs> hey, buddy, what's your address? Where do you live? <laughs> oh my god, he is so slay. Hey, <laughs> just a second, what the F are you doing? <laughs> Well, I don't know, man. You told me, you told me it requires a death, so I'm just doing what you said, bro. Come on, homie. It's your turn to die, Junpei. Address, please. <laughs> You're a psycho. Don't put in my details. Oh, he'll find out your details, buddy. Why are you worried? Not like the killer will target an accomplice. Yeah. Of course not, but still. <laughs> such a dick move. Oh, gosh. Got him. I stand up and pocket my phone. Later, Junpei. Freaking weirdo. <laughs> You're one to talk, homie. His face has contorted into a foul grimace, like he just swallowed something sour. I leave the restaurant. Jesus, Aoi cannot get away from the psychopaths. I mean, I'm sure she's a psycho too, but it's like just... Her two options are like corpse girl or corpse corpse fedora guy. I leave the restaurant. Kinda interesting to see his face contort like that too. Junpei Matsumoto essentially confessed that he's involved with the Human Removal Service. He agreed that he wouldn't be targeted if I, if I entered his name on the website. He admitted to being an accomplice. Don't know if he figured out what I figured out. Don't care. I need to tell Noriko. Is she just still living here? Oh, thank you, Dara. First thing I hear when I join is 999. Slay! I was saying slay a lot, too. Thank you, Dara, for uh, being a member. Appreciate you. And for being a mod, too. She is asleep in the corner as usual. Her laptop is beside her. The power cable is plugged into a portable generator. She's still in the same clothes, still wearing the same old makeup. I wouldn't change a thing about her. How I wish I could lay next to her. Wake up. I'm kind of surprised she didn't get him with the weird, like, corpse thing that she was doing last time when she was in the body bag. She was like, come on, get in here, Koji. I'm like, knowing how psycho he is now, it's honestly, like, kind of surprising that, like, didn't work on him. She stirs. I extend my hand. Uh, could you? I was kind of hoping, too. It'd be interesting to see her makeup, like, start to mess up more the more we keep visiting her and stuff, you know? Mm, it's still early. Need to talk. It's important. She rubs her eyes and yawns. Hmm, what is it? Look. I hold out my phone and show her the copycat's website. Her eyes widen as she slowly reads the text. Her jaw drops ever so slightly, and she looks at me in shock. How... How did you find this? I've been searching for weeks. I've tried so hard to find how the copycat is choosing victims. But there's absolutely nothing about this anywhere. Met a guy yesterday. Someone involved with the site. You're kidding. Serious. Junpei Matsumoto. Oh, oh, she's gonna flip out. Big guy. Rude. Unlikable. Knew who I was. Knew about the morgue. Oh, shit. He knows? Don't know how. She remembers, right? His name? We need to kill him. How? If he knows our methods, he won't just kill himself when he gets delivered a corpse. I gotta do it the old-fashioned way, baby. He'll just laugh it off. No. I know that. We really kill him. Noriko is silent. It's the unthinkable. Something we've never done before. I don't know if I can. I can do it. Okay. I don't want to kill the guy per se. I need to kill him. It's for our own safety. Okay, we're literally gonna slay this stream. With him alive, our secrets are compromised. He knows me. He may very well know Noriko. It's like, she's, does she not remember his name? I think, uh, well, I guess he might have just said Junpei. She might not know his last name. Junpei Matsumoto? Oh, here she goes. Why does that name sound so familiar? I guess she just blacked out, too. She was so, like, heartbroken. Check his profile. Oh, God. Noriko doesn't waste... Oh, no, she's gonna kill him herself when she sees who it is. <laughs> she's gonna be like, yes! Finally an excuse to slay this motherfucker. Noriko doesn't waste any time in bringing up his noise profile. Oh, shit. I peer over at her phone. Sure enough, the profile picture matches what he looks like. Hard to forget a guy like that. This is Aoi's boyfriend. Aoi, your friend. Aoi, the girl that Noriko never stops talking about. The cute and shy one. The one I followed. Oh! oh he's totally a creepy customer at the maid cafe. The one I followed more than a few times out of curiosity. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, Kojiro? 
Wanted to see what constitutes a friend of Noriko's and needed some tips. I don't know if he's totally aware of the fact that she's in love with her, though. Is she dating Junpei? Strange match! Is this for real? I met Junpei some time ago. Maybe last month? Oh wow, a month has passed? I see. Are they still together? As far as I know, I haven't spoken to Aoi in a while. Wait, I wonder. What? Never mind. I need to think some things over. Starting to suspect Aoi too. Okay. Kojiro, you remember the photo of my sister's corpse, right? <clears throat> Not the one that I crafted. The other one I found on her phone. Sure. You remember the instructions written on it? Stab Shuji at the party, right? Spot on. The copycat must send instructions written on corpse photos. I have a feeling the instructions always relate to killing other people. Other people whose deaths have been requested. Well, that's kind of smart, actually, to get more than, like, one, you know, death out of a way. Oh, a month has passed at the start of Kojiro's act. Okay, cool. I get it. Kill two birds with one stone. Send one corpse photo to a victim. Have them kill another victim. It's efficient. Get... Kill a lot more people in the crossfire, though, too, I'm sure. That's how they've racked up so many deaths so quickly. Exactly. We can only rely on news reports for the numbers, but... Yeah, Finastro, I agree. I also think Aoi posted Noriko's photo as well. It's pretty clear that the copycat has claimed a few hundred lives in the past month, at least. And we're up to 164. Yes. 164 deaths caused by Corpse Girl. But we've delivered twice as many corpses as that. How many did they say the other one? A few hundred lives in the past, so they've done like a few hundred and they're only up to 164. Damn, we gotta start copying them. We gotta start copying the copycat. Our success rate is about 50% and it has been dropping rapidly. It would seem that Corpse Girl's rising popularity is having a detrimental effect on our success rate. As public knowledge of Corpse Girl increases, the fear of receiving a corpse decreases. People are starting to figure out how the method works. If they don't cave in to fear, they don't kill themselves. It's that s This is so sad. Ugh, I'm literally just crying for them. Why can't these people just slay themselves? Like, why are they so- Why are they so selfish? In most cases in which the victim has survived, they simply brush off the state- The attempt on their life. They call the police out, the corpse removed, they go on with life. Yeah, if you do it- haven't been doing so well lately. Yeah, if you do it with two people, then it's like, you know, one of them might at least cave in. Especially if you have them, like, you know, to, whatchamacallit, like, attack each other, you know what I mean? But the deaths across Tokyo, the ones unrelated to us, are expanding at an exponential rate. They're just better than us. I don't know what to say. Seems that way. We're not really that smart. Then our rival has a more foolproof method of killing. Is it as simple as adding instructions to a corpse photo? Threatening someone with death unless they carry out the instructions? And then, if victim A receives a corpse photo, follows the instructions, and kills victim B, how does victim A also end up dead? Surely it's not suicide at that point. Why follow the instructions to spare your life and then kill yourself anyway? It doesn't add up. How are they killing so many people so quickly? Don't know. It's true, I have no idea. I pride myself on always being in the know, but this is beyond even me. I mean, with, like, the situation, like, the party, I don't know, it's, like, a lot more people die from, like, you know, there's two people requested the party, per se, and then, like, uh, I mean, it seemed like everybody at the party died, or a lot of people at the party died, at least, you know? It's, if it's, like, a big situation like that, I mean, people might just, like, lose it. Especially with, like, that girl, like, her group was kind of, like, you know, on the rougher side. However... I do know how to find out. Maybe I'll pay Junpei a visit. See what information I can extract. I don't like it, oh, but Jesus. it may be our only chance. <laughs> Get as much information as you can from him. Then dispose of him. Jesus. We're gonna abduct and torture him, huh? Her words cause a flare of adrenaline inside me. I won't let her down. She has given me a task, an important task. I'll show her what I can do, and then she'll love me. Good luck, Kojiro. Ah, the Delulu. Be careful. Of course. Later. I'm thankful that Noriko looks away just before a smir smirk splits my face in half. I take my leave. Fucking Koji, dude. Yeah, Junpei's definitely, definitely dead. Quite a bit of time has passed since he went inside the maid cafe. 
Can't imagine eating a meal takes this long. Unless there's something shady going on, he should have come out by now. Ali already quit the maid cafe, right? I think she mentioned that she'd finally quit it, right? My knees are beginning to hurt from crouching. I could stand up, but they're... but then I'd be more visible. Crouching at the corner of this alley suits me just fine. My knees should hold. I have a perfect view of the entrance. I've taken note of every single person entering and exiting. But he hasn't come back out. His noise post from earlier was right on the money. He said he would visit the maid cafe, and sure enough, I watched him enter. Could he... Could be he knows I'm tailing him. Whole thing could have been a ruse. He might have an escape route. But I already scooped, scoped out the alley behind the cafe. There's no other exit. Front only. Could he have climbed out a window? That's kind of like a fire hazard. Doubt it. Big guy. Not very fit. Because, yeah, I was, like, assuming... Yeah, Minty, yeah, she did quit already. That's what I was thinking, too. I was like... I thought so. She was still wearing the maid outfit, though. I thought maybe it was because, like, that night she had quit, but I can't really totally remember. I was like, why is he bragging about going to a maid cafe if he's not, like, visiting his girlfriend? That's so weird. She's already out of your league, homie. <laughs> why are you going to be bragging about going to a maid cafe? Even if he attempted such a feat, I surely would have overheard the struggles. I'll keep watch here. Can't be that much longer. According to the noise, he comes here often, his favorite place. Likely where he met Aoi. She still... Okay. She still works here? I thought she quit. She still works here according to Noriko. What does Aoi see in him? I know I was like... I was like, maybe he has a good personality, but... Nope. What does Noriko see in Aoi, for that matter? I'm just as pretty as her. The girl is boring. Cute, sure. But no outward personality. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Hard to tell when you only watch from afar. Uh. There he is. I'll have to follow him. Can't confront him here. Looks like he's heading towards the station. <laughs> Easy. Here goes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Didn't she say she went back? Oh, I guess so. She didn't mention her new job. I guess I just kind of forgot, honestly. She went back once and she left again. Yeah, I couldn't really remember, honestly. Can't believe this guy traveled to the very end of the train line. Took nearly an hour to get here. If his home is all the way out here, why does he travel so far to visit a maid cafe? He wandered into this underground parking lot, so I'm guessing his apartment building is above this little tomb. No one else around. Who calls a parking garage a tomb? Hey, is someone there? Fuck him up, Koji! Guess I'm not as stealthy as I thought. Huh? Kojimbo? <laughs> Kojimbo? Junpei Matsumoto. What kind of fucking, what kind of fucking nickname is that? The fuck? You follow me home, dude? That's right. <laughs> Baby. Have some questions. Not cool, man. Could have just DM'd me. No. I stride up to him and press my chest against his rotund belly, standing this close. It's easy to see that he's actually younger than I thought. I'm nearly a full head higher than him, despite his bulky build. I don't think I'd have any trouble crushing him in a fist fight. Back off, dude. I'm warning oh, you. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Come on. Come on. Come on, Kojimbo. Take him out. I don't think I'll do that. Oh, Slay. Question one. Hey, I ain't playing your games. <laughs> Here we go. Who runs the human removal service? I ain't telling you that. Fuck him up. Question two. How are the victims of the website killed? Fuck you, man. Oh, my God. Question three. Shut up. What is your role? I've listed the questions in order of importance. Please answer. Junpei pulls his head back and spits. Oh, my God. <laughs> Spits in my face! Jesus! The disgusted glob of saliva dribbles down my cheek. Ew! Oh! Oh! That was quick! Oh, oh my god! I snapped two of his fingers. Uh, holy fuck! <laughs> that was so fucking quick! The knuckles within his blubbery digits break inside my face! As I bend them in the wrong direction. He's got he's got some experience doing this, man. I s Koji, 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 Koji! I say with a sensation of shattered bone. Grinding against shattered bone as his knuckles splinter and pierce his skin. Question one. Who runs the human removal service? He's enjoying this too much. Junpei wrenches his hand away from mine. He clenches his other fist. He looks prepared to launch it at my face. Boy, you cannot do nothing to Koji. 
Oh, fu oh no, he's crying too. What about, well, I was like, Loki, I feel a little bad, but this guy is a douche. The punch connects perfectly against my jaw. I cock my head a little, riding the momentum of the impact. A tooth comes loose in my mouth. I think it's a bottom canine. Ah! <laughs> what? A swallow. <laughs> Oh my, what the fuck? Who fucking swallows a tooth? Turning my head back, I lock eyes with <laughs> I do this every weekend, Weepy. I fucking know what to do. Question two. <laughs> How are the victims of the website killed? Shit. You want another fist in the face? I'm my freaking fingers. <laughs> Question three. Oh my god. What is your role? Junpei tries to lash out with a kick to my shins. He's slow. He's just not cut out for a fight. I step aside and his leg fa <laughs> flails limply. Eh. Completely off balance. He falls and lands on his ass. I move towards him and stand over his recumbent body. Oh, dude. Dude. I've listed the questions in order of importance. <laughs> I keep saying the same thing. Please answer. Help me! Someone help me! This psycho is trying to kill me! I can't help but sigh loudly. I run my tongue along my gums, feeling for the gap created by my missing tooth. Damn, that tooth tasted so good. Definitely a, <laughs> definitely a canine that I swallowed. Bit of an inconvenience. I have to get a false tooth now. Wonder if, wonder if Noriko will think less of me. God, I hope not, queen. Question one. <laughs> Bro, just answer the questions. Fuck! You! Granted, he's gonna kill him afterwards anyways. He madly tries to kick up my ankles, his feet slap against mine with no force or pressure. Who runs the human removal service? <laughs> <laughs> the guttural beastly growl that spews from his mouth is the desperation of a cornered duck. It's like he turned into a dinosaur. I don't much believe in kicking someone when they're down, figuratively nor literally. I kick him in the ribs and his howl of anguish repeats itself. Sometimes you got to do things you don't believe in. I kick him again and again and again. One or three of his ribs shatter against the toe of my shoe. It's a crunching sensation. I like kicking the ribs of cadaver, which I've done plenty, plenty of times. I suppose a comparison really isn't necessary for you guys at home watching. Stop. Please. The slow, desperate plea is completely different from the urgent howls of frustration just moments ago. The pterodactyl noises. Being and wounded, the dog is panting heavily, his tongue lolling against the asphalt. <laughs> oh. Question two. <laughs> How are the victims of the website killed? A moment's silent prompts me to prepare my foot for another flurry of kicks. But a meek answer I didn't foresee causes my body to stiffen. Oh, Harold. He carries out all the killings personally. Okay, that's like a code name though, right? I frown and the motion causes a sharp pain to shoot through my bleeding gums. You're Harold. The dog spits blood down his shirt and groans. He's a visionary. A prophet. And he's immortal. What the fuck? He's more powerful than Corpse Squirrel ever was. Every person targeted by the human removal service is removed by the Herald's hand. Yeah, he's saying a he. I assumed it would be Owie. This wasn't the explanation I was expecting. I thought the operation was similar to Corpse Girls. Send a corpse photo to a victim. Urge them to kill themselves or give them instructions to kill someone else. Oh, thank you, Finastro. Run static void Kojiro. Do ask three questions in violence while Junpei doesn't answer. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for the dono. Appreciate ya. I like your icon too. It's cute. A little ghosty guy. That was what Noriko and I discussed. That was the conclusion we reached. I don't like being proven incorrect. I bring my foot. <laughs> He's just gonna fucking beat him up anyways. I bring my foot into Junpei's rib one more time and he hardly flinches. He simply exhales and absorbs the force. Question three. What is your role? I think the dog is unconscious. I tilt my head from side to side and hear a comforting crack and pop that reveals the tension in my muc muscles. I crouch down and press my fingers to his wrist. The pulse is strong and his breathing is regular. He won't die, not unless I take action now. I told Nori Noriko I'd kill him. I told her I'd take care of our problem. Okay? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> not 
owl is showing up. Oh, fuck. Are we going to have to kill her, too? Noriko is going to be pissed if we do. A girl's voice, soft and not unpleasant, but worried, terrified. I stand once more to see the concerned face before me. <gasps> what did you do to Junpei? Aoi Sato, Noriko's friend, best friend, and the girlfriend of Junpei Matsumoto. Sauce. <laughs> oh fuck, you gotta be kidding me! Not the fucking s <laughs> Oh my god, no! He did not, he did not fucking say Saz to beating her boyfriend on the verge of death. Is this the new meme? Is this the new fucking meme instead of Sawi? Sauce. <laughs> yes. Sauce for almost killing your boyfriend. I'm sorry, I had to get a picture of that. That's so fucking funny. I need to leave. <laughs> I mean, he said Sauce. Like, what are you gonna do about it, girlie? Come on, you gotta forgive him. Come on. Come on. I need to leave. Aoi doesn't know my identity. She doesn't know I'm involved with Noriko. If I escape now, I will never link this assault to Noriko. Well, that's option one. <laughs> option two! <laughs> option two! Get, get out of here, you psycho! I wonder what option two is. No, I can't. I can't think about option two. It's like starts murdering her. Sauce. <laughs> Sauce for killing you. That was pretty, that was pretty uncool of me. That was pretty not mad of me, bruh. No, I can't think about option two. If Aoi got hurt, Noriko would never forgive me. I can return to finish Junpei another day. I know where he lives now, after all. Later. This is probably her house, or like her apartment complex. I turn my heel and leave the sobbing girl to tend her with <laughs> Saws, later. <laughs> That's all he said to her. Oh my god. Fucking Kojiro. At least he said Saws, you know? I was like, at first I was like, wow, that's kind of fucked up. Then he said Saws, and I was like, he's Saws, okay guys? Like, wow. What a what an empath. He's so he's just so sweet. When I was with Shizuko, I became really fascinated with brewing coffee. Oh, that I guess was that that was his ex-girlfriend. She bought me a handheld bean grinder and a French press for my birthday. I feel like I'm playing like you know like that Netflix show you? What's his name? Like Joe? I feel like I'm playing like as him right now. <laughs> like he's about to be like, I loved her so much that I had to murder that fucking bitch because she broke up with me. Literally what it feels like. It feels like I'm playing Joe from you. To thank her, I made frequent trips to the market to buy freshly roasted beans. I would lose track of the hours I spent carefully grinding the beans and aiming to brew the perfect cup. Because he would go on like some crazy ass monologues too. But Shizuko never enjoyed the coffee. She never even had a taste of it. I didn't give up. I kept refining my technique. Kept experimenting with different beans and roast in an attempt to craft something she would find palatable. She died. I, I, <laughs> I wonder how she died. That's just so, that's just so weird. So coincidental that all your exes died somehow and your dad. She died and I threw the French press in the fucking trash. I just visit the cafe now for my morning coffee. Oh my god, did he literally invite Noriko to his dead girlfriend's old job? What a fucking... <laughs> ah! I don't need the handheld grinder for this cafe. More specifically... <laughs> I gave it to the queue waitress here, and then we kind of had a thing going on, but then she also died weirdly. Maybe it was callous of me to discard the gift that Shizuko gave me. No, not Joe Tazuna. Don't disrespect Joe like that. It's not his fault he shares the same name with Joe from you. It should have torn me apart to throw away something that symbolized what we had together. But three years ago isn't so important in the grand scheme of a lifetime. Besides, I have someone, someone else now. Well, I don't have her, but I want her. It's basically the same thing. Noriko reminds me of Shizuko in some ways. In other ways, they couldn't be more opposite. When the takeout coffee order is ready, I leave my money on the counter and grab the paper cup. I quickly- Oh, that makes more sense to why he has all the coffee uh, in his uh, room since his last girlfriend. I want like- Is it even his girlfriend? We're like Target? You know what I mean? Like, do they even actually date? I'm starting to wonder. The quick sip of piping hot brew fills me with a renewed life. The liquid scalds the area where my tooth used to- Oh, Jesus Christ, bro. You gotta get that taken care of. Not much for it. <laughs> Who drinks coffee after losing a tooth? Not much for it. I'll go to the dentist some other time. Yeah, whatever. It'll probably be okay. 
Coffee in hand, I'll leave the cafe and make my way to the next destination. Oh my god. Public libraries don't get the credit they deserve in this age. They're quiet, calm, soothing. That doesn't always do it for me, but it's nice to escape the bustle of the city. Plus, they always carry works by my favorite authors. But the librarians don't pay me any mind. I think they're at a loss to recommend books that fit my taste. I don't feel judged here. Nobody looks at me and wonders if I'm a creep. Nobody cares about my unshaven face or crinkled clothes. <laughs> Nobody wonders if I'm a creep. That's so weird that other people wonder that when you're just so normal. Nobody looks at me and asks me if I miss Shizuko. I wish someone would ask. Why don't these strangers ask me? Just once, it would be nice to know someone cares, even if I don't. Okay, okay, sure, Delulu, you obviously care. But no one knew Shizuko. No one knows she was in my life, and no one knows. She I don't even think she knew you were, you were in her life. You're probably just following her, and then you were like, I love you, let's get married, Shizuko. And she's like, who the fuck are you, bro? I haven't even told Noriko about her. I think she's had enough in her mind right now. I'll tell her when the time's right on our honeymoon. After wandering on the li library aisles aimlessly, I pick a tome from the shelf at random and find a couch to sit on. Oh, Shizuko sounds almost familiar. Was she one of the people that worked at um, the store maybe? No, well, no. Did we hear her at all? I don't know, I guess maybe we'll, we'll think about it. <laughs> It does kind of sound familiar to me too, but I'm not thinking if it's just- I'm not sure if it's like from another anime or something, you know what I mean? Comfortable at least, I sip my coffee and thumb through the book I've acquired. It would seem I've selected an autobiography about a famed painter I've never heard of. It will do for now. I'll read anything. I skim through the preface, then the first chapter. My fingers pick up speed as I thumb through the papers, never absorbing more than the first line of any particular page. Boring. Drivel. Can't read this. Toss the book aside and, the re and rest <clears throat> a closed fist underneath my chin. I'm not normally this restless. Usually I'm focused and driven. But it's my birthday. And Shizuko... Oh, it's his birthday too? Oh my god. And Shizuko isn't even here to get me a gift. That's so rude of her. It's like, just because I murdered you, you can't even get me a gift for my birthday? Bitch. Perhaps I regret throwing away the French press. It was the most- He's not even over her. It was the most thoughtful birthday gift I've ever received. Perhaps I just regret losing Shizuko. I just- I just don't know. <clears throat> if this were any other day, I wouldn't waste my time dwelling on the past. I thought I was above giving this day more significance than any other- It's probably the day he murdered her or something too. 35. Fuck. Where did the years go? Time really does slip through my fingers. Oh my god, not everybody's saying happy birthday in the chat. <laughs> oh my god, happy birthday, Koji. Best, best boy. Hell, it's even been more than a year since I met Noriko. <laughs> Technically, though I doubt she remembers our first meeting. The d How much Delulu juice does he drink per day, bro? I peer around the library and find a smile forming on my face. She probably thinks we met here just a few months ago. I asked her some trivial bullshit, something about Lovecraft or Cthulhu, then I introduced myself. But the first time we bumped into each other was at my apartment. Well, her apartment. <clears throat> I always, you know, I got inside her walls as per usual so I could like steal her clothes and sniff them. It was a fully furnished apartment. Didn't have to take much with me when I left. Oh, it was his old apartment. I bet it looks much the same today as it did back then. I returned to collect a few last things, a couple of blankets in the closet, a broom and a dustpan, a few knuckle bones, the usual stuff. And I wanted to say goodbye one final time. To my surprise, she was there, chatting to the landlord casually, inquiring about the terms of the lease. I must have frozen my tracks when I saw her. I know that I spent a good few minutes simply staring at her. She was beautiful. Gorgeous. Breathtaking. So much better than that bitch, Suzuko. Oh, and she looked like Shizuko. She looked so much like Shizuko. I was kind of wondering that too. Is he gonna like, if he like kidnapped her or whatever the fuck he wants to do, he will start being like, can I start calling you Shizuko now, sweetie? You didn't die. I didn't murder you. She shook hands with the landlord, said her name aloud. Noriko Kurosawa. 
Her name stuck in my mind. I played it over and over in my head. The landlord accepted her offer for the apartment. Noriko would be moving in, making the place her home. My place. I must have bumped my shoulder into her by accident when I tried to squeeze past. She apologized. I apologized. And I never washed that shoulder again. Zaz, so was just leaving. <laughs> she probably just like wanted to try to like... Erase the memory of some guy in his 30s saying the word saws unironically. Oh, no, please. It was my fault. I'm very sorry. Um, did you live here? I guess she just really didn't remember this conversation. Yeah. I see. Thank you for taking care of the place. I'll be moving in soon. I see. Did you like it here? Yes, very much so. It... It was home. I'm glad. I hope that I feel just as comfortable here. Did Noriko say anything about this apartment? <gasps> okay, I just thought she was crazy, but but Noriko did say that like her apartment smelled weird, like corpses, right? And what's his face? Shizuko like died and like disappeared, right? Or disappeared? She died and she disappeared. I was like, is she still? Is her body still somewhere in the apartment? I'm starting to wonder, honestly. Just just a thought to keep in mind, because when she was talking about her house or her apartment smelling like a corpse, I just thought she was Delulu. But now I'm starting to wonder. I think she might be onto something here. I nodded, but didn't pull my eyes from her face. It's like the good memories, too, is fucking murdering his last girlfriend. She walked away after gracing me with a polite bow. It's pretty bad when the corpse factory smells better than your apartment. <laughs> Jesus. Noriko from the back then was healthier than the girl. I know now. She's becoming little more than a skeleton, skin and bones. But her keen mind hasn't dulled. Oh, she literally is probably in the fucking walls or some shit, dude. Ah! And she's still gorgeous. Still takes my breath away. Just like Shizuka once did. But she refuses to leave the factory. She refuses to return to her apartment. I left that gift for her, Shizuko's corpse, and she didn't even say it. Thank you. Occasionally, Tomoe will go and fetch things she needs. Clothes, tiny portions of food, coffee, mostly. At some point, I got a delegated to selecting the most suitable cadavers from the morgue. Also, Noriko doesn't have to visit the morgue herself. She gives me a bunch of photos, and it's up to me to pick out and choose cadavers that best match them. Now my favorite work, it's tedious, and I don't have the eye for a detail that she does. But I do what I can. Ouch. My phone begins vibrating violently in my back pocket. I didn't realize I was sitting on it. Yo. Okay. Where the hell are you? Library. Don't you have deliveries to make today? I'm just taking the morning off. <sighs> you didn't ask me about that. I told Tomoe. Well, she didn't mention anything about it to me. Saws. I'll see you in a few hours anyway. I can't with the fucking saws. I just wanted to chill this morning. My birthday. It's your birthday? Uh, oh yeah, I shouldn't even know. Yeah. I didn't know. Happy birthday. Thanks. Okay. I'll see you this afternoon. Bye. Later. She sounded mad at me. In my defense, I haven't taken a day off from Corpse Girl's work for weeks. Didn't think taking this morning off would be too much to ask. Apparently, it rubbed her the wrong way. But juggling this work, as well as my morgue duties, is tiring. Don't get much time for myself. Don't get much time to think. Probably why Shizuko's face doesn't pop into my mind as much as it used to. My theory, anyway. I want to see Shizuko, too. I drain the remnants of my coffee cup. After returning the unread book to the shelf, I leave the library. I'm starting to wonder who's crazier, I'm him home. or Noriko. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I forgot. You're not in my wall, Shizuko. You're in Noriko's walls now. <laughs> Silly me, I'm just so used to saying I'm home and goodbye, you know? Because I'm just so used to you being the walls. I close the front door behind me. My place is always dark. The tiniest sliver of sunlight filters in from a gap between the closed curtains. I like... I like it this way. I spent countless nights underneath the unholy lights of the morgue. The fluorescent glow messes with my eyes. So I keep my apartment dark. It's comforting. Does he even have like a bathroom or anything? Happy Saw's Day. 
The place is small, smaller than my last apartment at any rate, Noriko's apartment. A tiny living space, one bedroom, a kitchenette. Okay, so he does have a bedroom. I thought it was like a studio for a second. The bathroom is pitiful, a half-sized tub with a shower head above it, a toilet, no sink. I need to use the kitchen sink after finishing my business. But it's home, moving here after deciding to leave my old place was the change I needed after I fucking buried Shizuko there. I threw away so much of my life from back then. I'm almost a completely different person now. Almost. I've kept my habits, mannerisms, the parts of me people find weird or off-putting. Can't help it. It's just how I am. All those quirky attributes that Shizuko couldn't stand. They're still with me. She's gone. And I'm still here. Come on. So guess who won, bitch? I shake my head at the sound of my own voice. What a birthday. What a pointless day. Dwelling on the past doesn't suit me. I moved on from Shizuko. Long... You have not moved on whatsoever, homie. I'm only stuck in her today because of my birthday. Because this day reminds me of that damn French press she bought for me. But it's gone now. And she's gone. All that remains is me. That's the way it always has been. Probably the way it always will be. Oh, god dang it. A freaking bot in chat. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Enough. Time for work. I don't feel like staying in and relaxing. I shovel towards the tall, narrow cabinet in the far corner of my living space. I hoist the door open and look at my clean white coat. It's not stained or dusty like the one I keep on display near the window. It's my good coat. The one I reserve for special days like my birthday. The white coat is resting comfortably on a white mannequin inside the white cabinet. I hate the color white. It serves no purpose. Despite its useless color, the mannequin holding the coat does serve a purpose. It carries my treasured possessions. Oh, Jesus Christ. Perhaps mannequin isn't the most fitting word for it, but it will do. As I grab my coat, the sleeve catches on the mannequin's fingers. I tug at it gently and manage to release the coat from the mannequin's body bony limb. Later. The fuck is he talking about? The fuck is he talking about? Mannequin? I always said her open. It's not stained or dusty like the one I keep. Oh, da. I was resting comfortably in a white mannequin inside the white cabinet. He was like, it's a mannequin, but is it really a mannequin? Is it like a skull or some shit? It's like a skeleton? I don't know. I'm definitely. I'm sus. Habit of mind saying goodbye to empty rooms. Used to be funny when rooms are truly empty. Not so funny anymore, but when that face stares back at me from within the cabinet. <laughs> what? When the face stares back from me, at me from within. Okay, that's to- Ma Okay, maybe she's in his walls. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Nothing to do about it. The, your other girlfriend? <laughs> the one before? What's Happy her face? Birthday. Thanks. I don't have a gift for you. I'm sorry. Listen, seems we have skeleton skeletons in his closet. Uh, or maybe just like a... How would he keep the body? Like, I don't know. I guess he just keeps replacing it instead of like uh, keeping one body in there. Because I was just thinking if it was like a full body. Like, uh, maybe like how would he keep it like from going bad? You know what I mean? All good. Noriko runs her hand along... Her opposite arm shyly, not like her to act so awkward and embarrassed. I, I just didn't know, that's all. I know. She seemed truly disappointed in herself for not knowing about my birthday. I looked at my noise feed and it even has a notification that today's the day. I'm sorry, I don't have a reasonable <clears throat> excuse. It's fine, really. What's on the agenda today? I want to break away from this discussion. I hate my birthday. I hate Shizuko for leaving me. Noriko sleeps astray, a stray strand of hair behind her ear and contemplates the question. 12 deliveries. Tomoe has already prepped the bodies. She's waiting in the van. I've sent the photos to the victims. Only 12 today? <sighs> We're not getting many new requests. All of today's deliveries are just part of our backlog. There aren't many corpses left here, actually. We've managed to work our way through most of them. Uh, have to visit the morgue again soon. I see. Hmm, things seem to be slowing down. I guess the other website might be more popular right now. Copycat is stealing our business. I just know it. Maybe. Oh, that reminds me. Whatever happened to Ali's boyfriend? What do you mean? I can't believe I forgot about it. You were going to kill him. He was really looking forward to that one. Oh. 
Yeah. Somehow I had forgotten about that too. Caught up in my own head today. Junpei Matsumoto. Is he dead? Oh, God. Unlikely. Nuriko's pout prompts me to explain. Heard him good, but Aoi arrived before I could go further. Oh, shit. Did she see you? Yeah. She doesn't owe me, though. I suppose. Wait. You didn't hurt Aoi, did you? The tone of panic in her grasping, gasping voice is impossible to disregard. Of course not. <sighs> Aoi's innocent, you know? She can't get caught up in all this. I know. I'd never hurt a friend of Noriko's. Unless they hurt me first. <laughs> Self-defense or something. So, what do we do about Junpei? If he's still alive, he knows that you're involved with the morgue and with Corpse Girl. Don't know. Actually, he did say something interesting. What did he say? I quote, Every person targeted by the Human Removal Service is removed by the Herald's hand. End quote. The Herald? Who the fuck is the Herald? For real. Did you miss here? Was it supposed to be Gerald? <laughs> Herald. Apparently some prophet. A visionary. Junpei says he's immortal. Immortal? You're not serious. Hmm. Every killing is carried out by him personally. What the hell? How is that even possible? How can someone kill so many people without getting caught? I shrug. My tongue subconsciously licks the gap where my tooth once. <laughs> Ew, can you stop bringing that up, dude? Guess he's good. Ugh, what a pain in the ass. Anyway, I'll take care of those deliveries. Thanks. I'm going to try and dig up something. Dig up? Not literally. Information. Online. Had me excited there for a moment. Don't worry. You'll be the first person I tell if I decide to go digging up bodies. <laughs> Thanks. I throw Noriko a lazy wave and take my leave. Their relationship is so weird. You finally good to go? Yeah, I was like, how is no one caught yet? I feel like the police are really, <laughs> they're really shitty in this game or something. Yeah. Good. I want to get this over with. I don't really feel like they've been doing a very good job at all covering their tracks. It's like, sure, they're not doing it personally, but it seems pretty easy to trace it back to them, or at least Kojiro. Okay. Oh, happy birthday, by the way. Thanks. It's funny to think that Tomoe knows about my birthday. I assume she read about it on Noi, since we're now uh, friends. Get any prezzies? <laughs> not one. Lame. What do you like? I'll buy you something. Aw, best girl. Really? You do that for me? Oh no, actually, don't be nice to him. Don't be nice to him, Tomoe. Of course. He may be a creep, but birthdays are the best. Everyone deserves a present. I think she's being nice. Not a fan of being called a creep. Well, I'd like a French press. <laughs> Would I? What's that? A coffee press. Oh, I know those. Yeah, sure. I'll order you one. Cool? He is so fucking weird, dude. It's like, Tomoe, ever think about dyeing your hair black and uh, being called Shizuko all of a sudden? Cool. Thanks. Sure. Happy birthday, Kojiro. Surprisingly, she steps forward to give me a short hug. Girl. Girl, save yourself! Feels nice. Contact. She's warm. Not like Noriko. Or the way I imagine Noriko to be. Her hair smells wonderful. Oh god, is he? Oh god, is he? <laughs> Sorry to turn. Do not target best girl. I'm not sniffing it on purpose. <laughs> I'm not sniffing it on purpose, guys. I promise. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Her hair smells wonderful. Like coconut. I'm not. She's like, can, can you stop? We've been hugging for like five minutes straight, bro. I'm not sniffing it on purpose. I'm not trying to play up to my reputation of being a creep, but it's impossible not to smell it when we're this close. Her fingers tap against my back a few times, and then she releases the hug. She's like, okay, I'm gonna fucking leave now. A smile as warm as her touch presses across her face. Come on, let's get going. Jesus Christ, dude. He is starving for any kind of affection. Yeah. I wonder what kind of childhood trauma he has too, dude. Tomoe opens the van's driver's side door and scoots inside. 
As the door shuts behind her, I can't help but entertain the thought of what she would be like. Oh my god, you are so fucking creepy, bro. Jesus Christ. As a girlfriend, a partner, a lover. Oh my god, my second girlfriend already? Oh my god, I hope Noriko's not mad that I cheated on her. She's nicer than I originally thought. Heart's in the right place. But she's, she's not Noriko. I shake the fleeting thoughts from my mind and urge myself to get on with the things. Delivery time. Oh, thank God, Tomoe. You're safe for now, girl. You're safe for now. She deserves better, dude. Oh, my God. More duties have felt mundane lately. Boring. Pointless. Lots of things I'd rather be doing. Had to come in early today, thanks to an influx of deceased patients from the hospital. Bodies get passed through the hospital halls and land on my lap, unceremoniously. They need tagging, need to be added to inventory, need to be stored. Cadavers are needier than some people. Don't know where I'm going to store this lot. Running out of the room in this place, only a handful of cold chambers still available. I can thank the Human Removal Service for that. This isn't the only morgue in the area, but it's one of the biggest. A lot of cadavers end up here. A lot of victims. Weeks ago, I used to smile every time one of Corpse Girl's victims entered this hallowed place. It was kind of poetic. Noriko cherry-picked corpses from this morgue. Those corpses were delivered to victims. The victims died. They ended up here as fresh cadavers. Ready to repeat the cycle. It was beautiful. The circle of death. Now it's rare for Corpse Girl's victims to arrive. More common than the victims of the Human Removal Service. At least, that's my speculation. When multiple homicide victims arrive on your doorstep every day, it's not hard to piece things together. Lacerations. Ew, dismembered limbs? Row marks, bludgeoned skulls. Myriad mortal wounds inflicted on the flesh. I always suspected Corpse Girl's copycat was behind the sheer amount of deaths raging across Tokyo. I kind of wonder sometimes if the copycat, like, I don't know if they have, like, a Shinigami or some shit on their side. Like, they have supernatural powers. Like, they just seem so overpowered. I was like, oh my god, is it Ryuk? Is Ryuk the Herald? Seeing the fruits of the copycats labored. L labor. Oh, labored? I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Labor! First hand has convinced me that we're not dealing with simple suicides. And Junpei Matsumoto's words still ring clear in my ears. Our Herald, he carries out all the killings personally. It all adds up. Corpse Girl has truly met her match. While the Human Removal Service continues to claim countless lives, Corpse Girl's success rate is rapidly declining. Much to Noriko's chagrin, Corpse Girl has become so well known that the general public no longer fears her. Like a figure from folklore or a fictional character, everyone knows the name Corpse Girl, but the only, but only the truly gullible belief she could kill people. I call it the Bloody Mary effect. Oh yeah, I remember that thing. If someone is predisposed to believe in a horrific entity, they will convince themselves that said entity truly exists. When targeted by Corpse Girl, such a person will succumb to suicide in an attempt to escape a potentially more grisly fate. In reality, they simply play right into the trap that Corpse Girl laid for them. Those that treat Corpse Girl as no more than entertaining piece of folklore like Bloody Mary are immune to the fear. Someone like this can receive a photo of their own corpse and shrug it off as no more than a threat than spam email. It's ironic that the success of Noriko's sought for so long is the very thing that has rendered Corpse Girl's methods ineffective. This is so sad. I wouldn't say all of this is Noriko's face. To Noriko's face, she's well aware of the situation. As for the Human Removal Service, no one seems to know about it. There's no mention of it anywhere on the internet. Anywhere I can, ha I can access at any rate. Police investigating the string of homicides haven't mentioned it. If the site relies on user requests, users to request deaths. I'm at a loss as to how people are learning about it. It truly seems to be some sort of shadow organization, except for the fact that Junpei essentially walked right up to me and revealed- What is it for real? That was so weird. I don't know his motives for doing so, fucking weirdo. And I don't know how he found out I'm involved with Corpse Girl's work. I really should take care of him. Yes, Koji. Let's go back to slang. I love that scene. A knock, at th a knock at the door. I rub my eyes and sit up slowly. I must have fallen asleep in my chair again. I in that chair, dude? How does anybody fall asleep in that fucking chair? 
<laughs> Still groggy, I get up and look through the front door's peephole. A single lonely package sits the doormat. I don't know where this came from. Oh, shit. Haven't ordered anything online lately. I swing the door open and pick up the plain brown parcel. Something rattles inside. Bring it indoors, I slip my thumb underneath the packing tape and tear it open. Nestled on a bed of packing foam is a white box adorned with the image of a French- Oh, it's the French press! A coffee maker. This <laughs> so fucking weird, dude. I cannot handle him. Tomoe. That's right. This is the gift from Tomoe. She really brought- Bought me a birthday gift. Something- Is he about to switch? Something that I truly wanted. My friend. Tomoe. My lover. My one and only. After putting the package down, I retrieve my phone and open up noise. It's- I forgot. Yeah, he always does that. That's so weird. He'll like randomly capitalize different uh, letters. Thank you for the birthday gift. You got it already? Just now. It's a good brand too. It's so weak. Glad you like it. Oh, she's so cute. Even the way she types is so cute. Maybe I'll uh, brew you a cup one day when I come- You wanna come to my apartment, girl? <laughs> Be murdered. Immediately. Huh, huh. Hey, yeah, a cook girl. No! Don't do it! <laughs> Extra sugar! You got it. Timoy doesn't send a follow up message. I take that to mean the conversation has expired. It feels good that she did such a nice thing for me. Almost forgotten what it's like to have someone care. Pity she has a boyfriend. Never stops going on about him. Regardless, it doesn't matter. I shouldn't misconstrue a kind gesture as affection. She was simply bestowing a birthday gift. Something most people would do for a friend. Something, oh god, here he goes, here he goes. I was like wondering when he was gonna get to that. They're like, Noriko didn't do that for me. She doesn't even care. It's like she doesn't even realize that we're married. I should just murder her. Don't know how to break down Noriko's barriers. Been trying for a long time. She just never seems to warm up. Maybe chasing her is a lost cause, yes. But I'm tired of being lonely. I'm, I'm so tired. Noriko, Tomoe, I don't care. <laughs> the desperation. I don't care, man. If either of them would accept me, I would give them everything I have. Dude, you just like brush against him, like walking past him in the hall. And he's like, physical, physical touch. Oh, I love you. My new wife. I just don't want to be alone anymore. Jesus Christ. I like I almost feel bad for him in a way, but he's also just so creepy. The start of another long knife. Night. Alone, like always. The cadavers can hardly be called company. They don't speak, don't laugh at my jokes. Not like living people laugh at my jokes anyways, especially not Noriko. Oh, beep boop. Yeah. Hey, I think I mentioned this a day or two ago, but our reserves have pretty much dried up. Okay. Reserves. She means her stash of corpses at the factory. She has a way with words. Anyway, three new requests came through today. I'm really excited. Maybe things will pick up again. Maybe. I'll send through photos of the Vix. Can you select some corpses that resemble them? Tomoe will come by with the van. Okay. Thanks. Um, are you okay? You're pretty quiet. More than usual, anyway. I'm fine. I see. Well, thanks. I'm sending the photos now. Message me when you're done. I'll send Tomoe over. Yeah. I end the call and return my phone to my pocket. It vibrates three times in quick succession as Noriko's photos automatically download. Three, requ three requests. Not much, but enough to lift her spirits. I scan the array of cold chambers lining the walls. This place is packed to the gills. It shouldn't be a problem to find some matches for her. I take a stroll alongside the left row of chambers. All the bodies within are due for cremation. I take my pick from here. Just like always, and business as usual. I fish my phone out once more and examine the new photos. Two women, one man. Middle aged, young adult, young adult. Normal, everyday people. Corpse girl will wrap her fingers around their throats and try to kill them, but will probably fail because she does like half the time. Will they shrug off the attempt on their lives? Time will tell. I'll do my best to help Noriko in their lives. I'll wander towards the computer at the end of the room and log into the inventory system. Time to find some suitable bodies. Oh man, these people are... <laughs> <sighs> the corpses you picked out are good. 
Two of them, anyway. What's wrong with the third? Mm, he looks a bit too old. Older than the victim, at any rate. I see. Sorry. Oh! Whoa! Saying sorry and not saws? Who are you? It's not a problem. I think it'll still be convincing. Are we delivering them today? No. I received even more requests overnight. I need you to go select more cadavers. Sheesh. Again? Sorry. Aren't you happy that we're busy again? Couldn't care less. I'm only doing this for you. It's the truth. Even if she doesn't want to hear it. I heard that Tomoe got you a birthday gift. Way to change the subject. Uh... I... I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be your friend, and I was just so caught up within my own head that I couldn't be bothered with your birthday. It's fine. The <laughs> chat freaking out because of Saws. <laughs> what happened to him? This is so sad. Where is the Saws, Kojiro? He's a changed man, dude. It's not fine. So, if you'll accept a late gift, is there anything you would like? A French press. A date. Oh. With you. Anything else? <laughs> no. You're being awfully forward today. I thought we agreed to just be friends. What's gotten into you? Nothing. Forget it. I have to look away from her and prevent her from seeing the snarl on my face. I'll go pick out some cadavers for you. Later. Okay. Bye. I step away and mutter to myself. Stupid. Oh god. Oh god. I'm so stupid. Why am I acting so desperately around her all of a sudden? You're like the definition of desperate, homie. Oh my god. He is such a freak. Like, he's like one of those people who's like, it's fine as mine. It's not fine. What kind of hello is that, frick? Sauce. In a mood. There you go. He's back to normal. This means he truly loves Tomoe because he's he's himself around her. He thinks he has to say sorry in front of Noriko, but Tomoe, he knows he can say sighs. Always the case with you, ain't it? Seems to be. She kits me. Oh, God. He really is about to change. Listen, how about that cup of coffee you promised me? Huh? Ah! Oh, God. Are we going on a date with Tomoe? You know, come on. Don't make me sick. <laughs> Every time we play as a character, we go on a date with Tomoe as Noriko, now as Kojiro. You said you'd brew me some coffee with that French press thing. And, well, ugh, I could really use a cup, you know. Oh, yeah. I remember. Uh-oh. Sauce, Noriko has sent me to the morgue. Why? she kill you? No. Taking me a second to get that she's joking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tomoe smiles warmly and waves her fingers in the air. Tomoe, stop being so pretty and charming! I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it ain't every day a pretty girl offers to have coffee with you. So are we doing this or what? I can't fathom a reason for Tomoe's recent shift of added... Is she in love with me? Oh my god, I think so. I, I'm so scared he's gonna kill Shinya or something, honestly. Because Shinya is such a sweetheart and like... She really is like super duper in love with him. When we first started working together, she could hardly tolerate being in the same room as me. And now she wants me to brew coffee for her? Oh, why? Does she want something from me? <laughs> she <laughs> Delulu! The Delulu juice! Is she in love with me? <laughs> hey, why are you making that face? No, she's definitely not. Definitely not. No one loves me. Even so, I don't want to be alone anymore. How can I rip God, she's about- Oh god, Tomoe is about to be the new corpse in his walls. <laughs> Thank you, Kyoko. Shinya's still waiting at her apartment. No, Shinya! He's like the only good person in this- Well, him and Aoi, maybe. But I feel like Shinya, we can already- We can say Shinya's a good boy, you know what I mean? He's like the only sweetheart he does not deserve for his girlfriend to get murdered. How can I refuse her offer? Okay, I can put off the morgue until later. You finally came to your senses, huh? Well, come on then. Let's go to your place. I'll drive. If we kill Tomoe, I... I don't know. I like. I think I would cry, honestly. Like, I love her so much. She's like, for real, my best girl. My place. The last time a girl visited my place. Oh, I remember. I remember it all too clearly. It was back when I lived in Noriko's apartment. Back when Shizuko 
clutching my tongue, serves to distract me from the painful memories. Let's go. Oh, Jesus Christ. Tomoe, please. Please don't die, girly. Please don't die. Please don't. This Please is your don't. place, huh? <laughs> She's like, what the fuck? This looks like a serial killer lives here. It's freaking dark in here. Oh, no. I was just thinking, too. Is she going to see the mannequin in his closet? I mean, she already knows he does a bunch of sketchy shit. So, like, surely she wouldn't. he wouldn't, like, feel like, oh, I got to kill you now if you see that. But I'm just wondering if she saw the mannequin, if she would describe it in a different way. You know what I mean? Oh, God. Sauce. Sauce. Is a vampire or something? Of course not. I was just outside in the sun with you. True that. <laughs> True that. Tomoe looks around the small room and stands uncomfortably by the wall. You don't bring girls back here very often, do you? No. Maybe if you made the place look more appealing, then girls just might want to come back here. You're here. Sure, but mm. I'm complaining, ain't I? True. Why are you here anyway? It's not for coffee, is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're a sharp one, ain't ya? Listen, I wanted to talk to you away from, you know. Yeah, I kind of figured that'd be the actual reason. She's probably worried about her. Your boyfriend? No! Please! <laughs> away from Noriko! <laughs> Dude, he's so down bad. Oh. See, this whole thing's been going downhill, wouldn't you agree? All this shit with trying to make people off themselves? Sure, I'm used to it by now, but shit started to hit the fan. How so? Well, there's the business with, what was it? The human removal service? Noriko told you about that? Yeah, of course. They're besties, you know? And <laughs> besties. They've been out there killing and killing, and the police want to shift all the blame onto Corpse Girl. After all, Corpse Girl is the only killer that has gone public. Her name and website are written all over the body bags we deliver. People talk and everyone knows about her. Mm. So, of course the police are gonna assume she's behind all the murders. Except, she's not. Not really. A handful of them here and there, but even then, they're just suicides. Corpse Girl. Noriko. She ain't out there slashing necks and drowning people and setting houses on fire. Yeah, she's gonna get blamed for it, though. She ain't doing any of that shit going down on the news. I know all this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, if things keep up at this rate, the cops are gonna find her. Noriko. Yeah. And she's gonna get locked up for life. I ain't gonna lie. She deserves it. <laughs> the stuff she's doing is messed up. Honest queen. The thing is, me and you, we're a comp... Accomplished... <laughs> Yeah? I like the way she said that. Accomplices? Yeah, that. We're in neck deep. If Noriko gets put on ice, we get taken along with her. Hmm. I see. You're worried about going to prison. Of course I am. I've got people to take care of. What would Shinya do if I got locked up? What would he think of me? Not to mention my little brother and sister. Tomoe's crestfallen continence makes the room feel darker than it truly is. Uh, I don't know if I really heard too much about her, um, uh, whatchamacallit, her family. Her watery eyes break away from mine and she tries hard to restrain herself from sobbing. Aw, Tomoe! I don't think I can do this anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God, I'm starting to get worried that he's gonna kill her because he sees her as, like, a liability though because he's still like obsessed with noriko maybe get obsessed with tomoe just so you don't feel the need to kill her for noriko's sake or some crazy shit like that come on bo come on bro and you like that she can say uh, accomplice accomplishments accomplishes no matter how much she pays me i just i just can't keep risking it i understand this is difficult for her she's torn between loyalty to a friend and her own freedom i think your course of action is clear it is? Yes. You need to step away from the game. I just, I hope that's not what happens, but he's so obsessed with Noriko. I feel like that could happen. It won't do us any good if you're not totally invested. You can make a fatal mistake <clears throat> that has consequences for all of us. If you're not committed, not focused, it's best that you part ways with Noriko. Amicably and living, right? You know, you really are more understanding than you look. I thought you were a total social outcast with no feelings or empathy. Thanks. Let me finish. <laughs> I... I was wrong. No, girl, you were right! You're all right, Kojiro. <sighs> I'll... I'll take your advice. I'll talk to Noriko and tell her I ain't cut out for this anymore. 
It's for the best. Dude, I just want her to live a happy life with Shinya. You know, like she deserves she deserves to have a normal, clean, good life. I guess we won't hang out anymore. Fucking Noriko. Do we ever hang out? <laughs> well, our deliveries, our time at the factory. Dunno. Kind of grew to like it. Kujiro. Oh shit. I forgot. There's something I still need to do for Noriko. What's oh, that? No. She asked me to go to her apartment and pick up some clean clothes for her. I owe her that much at least. You wanna come with me? Oh shit. Her apartment? Noriko's apartment. My apartment. Not anymore. I haven't lived there for a while, but it will always feel like mine. I was kind of wondering too, cause like, Timoy's been going to her apartment and I'm like, is she smelling? the smell too, you know what I mean? Cause she's not, she's pretty like, you know, she's the most even headed of all the people in this group. So I think she would be like the best, you know, rational person for us if you kind of be like, okay, it really does smell like a corpse there. I wonder if there are any old memories to find between its, <laughs> between its walls or inside its walls. Like we've been guessing. Okay, I'll come with Jesus you. Christ. Do I need to break any windows? No, of course not. Noriko gave me your keys. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Girl, just go alone. Go by yourself. I see. Oh, she's totally gonna die. You sound disappointed. I feel like she's gonna die. I sure I can let her accusation slide. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Secrets between the wall. I cannot believe he said that. I didn't expect a flood of mundane recollections to drown my mind as soon as I started climbing the staircase. This place is such a hold over me. My past life. My life with Shizuko. It's so foggy, but so familiar. I don't even feel like the same person I was back then. But of course, I'm the same. I'm still me. And the stench ingrained in these... <sighs> we were totally right. Like, he keeps dropping the hints. And yeah, no, no. Yeah, she's, she's definitely... <laughs> Every time I come in here, it smells worse and worse. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it! She's gonna find the body, and I feel like he might kill her. It's just like I feel like a lot of times in these types of like shows, or well, not show, it's like a game. But these types of stories, you know, it's like whenever somebody's like, okay, one more mission for me. That's when they fucking die. Oh my God! She's literally in the walls. What is it? Don't know. <laughs> Mold? You know, you know, mildew. No, it's more sickening than that. It's something rotten. Yuck. Anyway, her place is up just a few more levels. I know. Oh, you've been here before? Mm. <laughs> huh. <laughs> no real answer. Tomoe abandons her thoughts in the air and continues to climb the stairs. When we reach the landing below Noriko's floor, oh, hey, Momo! Young girl's voice rings out. Hello? We haven't seen her in a while. Daddy? Oh, no. Is her dad dead? It doesn't take long to identify the owner of the voice. Probably not. I think I'm just, I think I'm just on edge right now. A girl no older than seven is knocking repeatedly on the door of an apartment. Huh? Oh. Aw, she's so cute. She notices our arrival. <laughs> Her little kitty dress, she's so fucking adorable. Kojiro. Hello there, my name is Tomoe. What's your name? Momo. Nice to meet you, Momo. Do you live here? Mm-hmm. The door's locked. Oh, I can't no. get inside. I see. Somehow the girl has locked herself outside of her own apartment. Is your mommy or daddy home? I think daddy is home. But he won't answer the door. Oh no. Yeah. I think the dad is dead. Oh, maybe it is the dad that's actually the smell and not the ex girlfriend. Because I was like, I mean, that would have been there for like a year or something, but we'll see. Let me try, okay? Oh no. The young girl hesitantly nods, nervousness ev evident on her features. Tomoy slams her fist against the apartment door, unafraid of holding back her strength. Yo, anyone home up in here? Hello? Anyone there? Oh, God. After a good 30 seconds of pounding the door, Timway puts her hands on her hips. Are you sure your dad is home right now? I think so. He was here right before I went outside to play. Timway grimaces and looks me dead in the eyes. You don't think something happened, do you? In this game, definitely. I don't know. 
I crouch down and rest my weight on my knees. On one of my knees so that I can come face to face with the girl. What's your dad's name? Um, it's Kenji. Kenji, huh? And what was he doing before you went to play? Momo twiddles her fingers uncomfortably. Her expression turns thoughtful as she tries to remember. He was nice, too. He seemed like a good dad. He was watching TV. I see. Thank you. I stand back and turn to Tomoe. He's like, yeah, she, he's fucking dead. She raises an eyebrow as in disbelief of the polite persona I adopted to talk to the girl. If he's got the TV on, it might be too loud for him to hear us. Anyway, I'm sure he'll open the door soon. We should go up to Noriko's. Oh, God. You're unbelievable. I ain't leaving this girl here. What if something bad happened to her dad? Best girl. Something happened to dad? Oh, no! No, no, honey. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Kojira, we need to get in there. Tomoe's sentence is cut off as the apartment door suddenly opens. Oh, a formidable man, broad shoulders, with a smoldering expression, now inhabits the open doorway. Oh, no. Oh, no. I was like, oh, maybe he is alive. Nope, nope. Clear the doorway. Oh, shit. He takes one look at Momo and then turns his neck to bark at somebody behind him. He's going to totally be an asshole to Momo. He's like, yeah, your dad's dead. <laughs> Fuck off, kid. Go to the orphanage. Right oh, God. Bring her with us. Hurry it up. Yeah, he's dead. The stern man pushes past me and I stumble as I try to get out of his way. I don't like being pushed around, but the sight of half a dozen un uninformed police officers shuffling out of the apartment behind him encourages me not to retaliate. Oh, God dang it. Daddy? No, Momo! She didn't deserve this! Dragging, dragged along behind one of the officers is a handcuffed man in disheveled clothes. Momo! Uh oh, oh, oh what God. the fuck? Oh no! Is it he's he's getting blamed for Corpse Girl since she was using their Wi-Fi? I wonder if it's that actually. Maybe. Sweetie, Daddy, Daddy has to go to the police station for a little bit. I'm surprised he's alive though. I really thought he was. I really thought he was. Um, what should we call it? Really thought he was dead. I'm sorry, sweetie. So sorry. Before he can squeeze out another word, the police officers yank him away from his daughter. He is accompanied downstairs and disappeared from view within moments. Daddy, come back! Aww. The final police officer to exit the apartment bends down in front of Momo. He mumbles something to her, then grabs her shoulders in an attempt to steer her towards the staircase. Daddy! Yeah, he's definitely getting framed. What the fuck is going on here? Tony takes a step forward towards the officer, her finger slowly curling into a fist. Don't. Yeah, I, well, I'm like, fuck Noriko, dude. She's the one who should go to jail. I mean, her and then Junpei in the Herald or whatever his name is. Honestly, Kojiro too. Tomoe, perfect queen, did nothing wrong. Don't get involved. It's a police matter. I think she understands my vague warning. She stops struggling against me. Oh, no. Aw. Young girl is escorted downstairs and Tomoe stands defeated next to me. What the hell just happened? Aw, oh, poor Momo, though. She's such a sweetie. Tomoe is uncharacteristically quiet as she searches Noriko's ap apartment for clean clothing. Witnessing that man, Kinji, get arrested in front of his own daughter seems to have dampened Tomoe's spirits. Although he's a stranger, I can't help but feel bad for the guy. Don't know what he did wrong, but surely his daughter didn't need to see what was going down. You okay? Tomoe ignores me as she rifles through Noriko's dra drawers. Decided by my tongue and simply take a seat on the edge of the bed. Fucking Noriko framing the innocent family with the Wi-Fi. First man to leave that apartment, the guy with broad shoulders. He looked familiar, very familiar. Seemed to be in charge of the officers. A detective? Yes, that's it. A police detective. I've seen him on TV a few times lately. He's the one heading up the investigation of the recent homicides. Oh shit, too. Well... I don't know, I guess if he'll have that good of memory, but if he sees Tomoe with Kojiro and he realizes that Kojiro is like attached to Corpse Girl, and then, cause I think, has he met Tomoe through like Shinya yet? Like, uh, cause uh, the detec detective guy is, um, what's his face, uh, Shinya's dad. I was like, I can't remember if he met Tomoe. I feel like they kind of talked about it. Like, uh, oh, Shinya's dad is really like uh, intimidating or something. The one accusing Corpse Girl of being the culprit behind the human removal services string of murders. Interesting. Then, the man he apprehended, Kenji, is he involved with the case? Is he a suspect? Is he the Herald? A neighbor of Noriko's. 
could it truly be? Could Kenji truly be the leader of the Human Removal Service? Try to connect all the dots in my mind. He lives close to Noriko. He might even be on speaking terms with her. He might have access to Noriko's computer or her website. Could he have been the original hacker stealing Corpse Girl's request, the copycat? Nah. It seems coincidental, but... It almost makes sense. It's more likely than not that the copycat is someone who personally knows Noriko. Someone who has an inside view of her life. But what's his motive? Looked like a normal guy. Just a father living with his daughter. Living his best life. What could have inspired him to embark on a killing spree? Actually, for the matter, what inspired Noriko to do the same thing in the first place? <laughs> Starting to realize she's a little off her rocker, is it? <laughs> Never mind that, it's relevant now. Kinji, are you the one who's been, who we've been looking for? Are you allied with Jumpy? Are you the prophet? The herald? The one capable of standing toe to toe to Corpse Squirrel? Okay, I'm done. I blink a few times and look at Tomoe. She's standing with a pile of clothes, nearly nestled in her arms. Can we get going? Yeah. Leaving now is for the best. Yeah, I don't blame her for being all shook up. I want to get home. I want to spend some time with my thoughts. There's a lot of new information to sort through. Oh, thank you, Froggy. There's a bot in chat. I think, did they get it? Did they get the bot? I can try to see if, uh, I can, like, ban him. Yeah, I think, uh... Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think Nikki got him. Thank you, though. Thank you for the dono, too, Froggy. Oh, man. Okay. That's good, though. I was so sure Tomoe was gonna die, honestly. I was so scared. Because Koji is just so, like... I feel like he's just ready to snap at any moment, honestly. Not a morning person. Never have been. But running with Noriko has forced me to get up early more times than I can count. Doesn't mean I'm getting used to it. Still can't prevent myself from yawning. Doesn't help that last night was a sleepless one. Couldn't convince myself. Couldn't convince my overactive mind to take a break. Even distractions didn't help. Couldn't concentrate on reading. Couldn't focus on tidying the apartment. <laughs> like you ever clean your apartment, bro? Nothing worked. I guess it could be like a collection of all the coffee cups that like Shizuku or Shizuko or whatever her name was like used to use. Like, oh, it still, still smells like her. Still see the lipstick stain on it and shit. Same questions kept bouncing around the inside of my skull. When the sun came up, I decided to stop torturing myself and just confront Noriko. Perhaps she had some answers. Wake up. Lean over her near lifeless body and whisper sharply. Is she even eating anything? Like, I guess I bring her coffee, but I don't know, man. Don't want to scare her awake. Don't want her to ignore me either. Noriko, wake up. My whisper becomes more of a hiss, and the girl before me begins to stir. She rubs her eyes, a familiar sight, thanks to all the times I've woken her up lately. Again, Kajiro? Uh, what time is it? Early. Listen, got some questions for you. Mm, give me a break. She sighs, sits up, and reaches for her handbag, lying next to her futon. After rummaging through its contents for a few seconds, she curses under her breath. No coffee. Here. I toss her a silver can of coffee I picked up, for, up from a vending machine on the way over. I know the drill by now. Know Noriko well. The can slips through Noriko's slender fingers and comes to rest safely on her lap. Oh, thanks. She cracks open the tab and takes a long sip, effectively draining half the contents in once. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is nice. I feel her, though. I'm addicted to coffee, too. She thoughtfully examines the front of the can, running her fingers along the embossed logo. Glad you like it. Now questions fine go do you know a guy named kenji with a daughter momo noriko cocks her head to the side as if this was the last question she expected to hear from me uh yeah i know them they're my neighbors kind of they live on the floor below me that's right you on speaking terms more or less oh thank you finastro Everyone, gangsta, until Kojiro says, oh, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude, I can't even imagine him saying that I sincerely saw. <laughs> that would be more him, okay? It's just not right for him to say sorry or apologize. You know what I mean? Thank you for the dono. Appreciate you. Her eyes dart away from mine, and she takes a moment to think. Almost sweet. A nice girl. Kenji... We used to talk, but then, well, I think he's lost respect for me. Let's leave it at that. I see. 
This is weird. How do you know those two? Hmm. I suppose it can't hurt to tell her. Tomoe probably will if I don't. Went to your apartment yesterday, but Tomoe. You did? Had to collect clothes for you. Going upstairs, we saw Kenji get arrested by the police. Lots of cops. And the detective from TV. Detective? Wait. Kenji got arrested? Why? Don't know. They took him away in cuffs. Took Momo too. No. Girl. It's your fault! The detective. You're not talking about the one heading up the murder investigations, are you? <laughs> Jaisal, I am so sauce for your loss. Oh my god. It's him. Big guy. <laughs> he would do that at a funeral, though, like unironically to say that. Fujikawa. Huh? Fujikawa? Yeah. Interesting. Didn't know his name before. Detective Fujikawa. Not exactly the type I want to cross. Noriko's shoulder slump. Poor Kenji. I wonder why he got arrested. Girl, you know why? That was your backup plan. A flicker of realization flashes across her face. Within a split second. Oh, no. Oh, she's so... Oh, my God. I forgot. She's probably going to get off on this. Noriko's defeated expression gives way to a hideous, wicked smile. Her eyes narrow and a shrill laugh pierces my ears. I almost forgot for a second that she's completely psychotic. <laughs> you bitch! You bitch, Noriko! Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, my God. What about Momo? You liked Momo! Don't know if she's lost the plot. She's never had it. Or if she's figured something out. All those precautions I took. <laughs> All that preparation. It finally paid off. Spill it. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, listen carefully. Of course she would be happy about this. Why did I expect even the tiniest bit of remorse from her? When this all started when Corpse Girl first told me to start killing. When Corpse Girl first told her? I thought she was Corpse Girl. That's what she always referred to herself as. It's like a second... She did kind of think that Corpse Girl was like almost a second identity that she had or something. I knew that running the website from my apartment was a risk. I knew accessing the database of the deceased could be tracked by anyone watching me. I took certain measures to protect myself. To protect Corpse Girl's work. What did you do? I pinned everything on Kenji Ogawa. I used his internet service, his Wi-Fi. I used his address for registering my website. Fucking bitch, dude. Oh my god. Thank you, Bree. Remember, everyone, she's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> god. That's just the... That's just the first of it. Like, oh my god. She is so insane. I almost forgot for a second because I wasn't reading for her this uh, episode. I used his name for every service I signed up to. Everything I did created a trail of breadcrumbs that would point to Kenji in the event that the authorities ever came looking for Corpse Girl. Sponsored by NordVPN? Nah. <laughs> Devious. Cunning. Noriko planned everything from the start with a great amount of forethought. All according to Kai Kaku, baby. More concerning is the fact that she wasn't afraid to throw her neighbor to the wolves in order to save her own skin. Still, if I take Noriko at her word, this rules Kinji out as the mastermind behind the human removal service. He couldn't be the herald that Junpei Matsumoto spoke of. He was just a scapegoat. Wrong place, wrong time. Clever. I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Paid off. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Thank you, Kyoko! Why is she celebrating? If it's not him, they can get to her. Her shouts at the mall does not pro That's what I was thinking, too. I feel like she's kind of... I don't know, Noriko, like, sometimes I feel like she is really smart, and other times I feel like she's so stupid. Like, because to me, it's like, it just seems like they're getting closer to, like, you know, her trail. Like, if they can't, I guess I'm, like, trying to think, I'm, like, I feel like at some point they could figure out that, I mean, I guess it depends on how, like, incompetent the police are in this universe, but, like, at some point, I feel like they're... Probably gonna figure out, okay, there's like only the website stuff that he's been doing, but we don't have any like relation to him like causing the deaths. Like, we have this trail of corpses, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they could still track her down. Like, I would be worried if I was her. I'd be like, oh, they're getting closer to me, not like, oh my god, yes, they got the wrong guy and they're not gonna even question it. The police will either treat Kenji as the culprit 
or release him once they figure out he's not who they're looking for. Does she want to get caught, though? Is she kind of into that? Either way, they'll be back to square one. No. <laughs> you live right above his apartment! <laughs> and I'm off the hook. Sure, if you say so. <laughs> if you say so, dumbass. Mm -hmm. That's all well and good, but you've been conducting a lot of work recently since you stopped living in your apartment. What's your point? Been logging to Corpse Girl's website from here, from the factory. Yeah, for real. You've been accessing that database of the deceased, too. Don't you think if the authorities trace that, they'll just come looking for you here? <laughs> um, mm. I'm. I'm using my cell service to connect to the web. I'm not using a dedicated internet connection. And I'm running my connection through a proxy to mask my IP address. It's spot NerVPN, have you ever heard about it? Use code Noriko if you want to get 15% off. That can't be traced, right? I shake my head. I'm pretty sure it can be tracked. Not my area of expertise, though. I don't know, but I'd be cautious if I were you. The cops will figure out Kenji's not guilty soon enough. Just you wait. Yeah, girl. Guy like that, you won't be able to give them any of the information they're looking for. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets released before the weekend. So? <laughs> so? Hitting a dead end like that will only enrage the police. Especially that detective, Fujikawa. Don't you think they'll redouble their efforts after that? They'll surely do whatever it takes to catch the true culprit. <sighs> yeah, sure, I hear you, but Corpse Girl really isn't the one they're looking for. The human removal service is behind most of the recent deaths. But they don't know that, girly! They don't know that. They only have eyes for Corpse Girl. You made her famous. Made her known in every household across Tokyo. She's as much at fault as the Human Removal Service. And you know it. If they catch you, let's just say you won't be let off the hook so easily. Yuriko folds her arms across her chest angrily. Not my fault she doesn't want to hear the truth. This whole conversation has given me a headache. All my assumptions on the identity of the Herald led me to a brick wall. But I did glean one interesting piece of information from Noriko's words. A phrase that loops within my mind, verbatim. When Corpse Girl first told me to start killing, I rubbed my chin and thought- go. You good here? Okay. Noriko drains the rest of her coffee and tosses the can aside. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Right. Doing great. Later then. <laughs> Just gonna get arrested for murder in a little bit. No probs. Noriko probably doesn't, doesn't speak another word. I leave in silence. It's like, what? Is my precious Noriko kind of a psycho? I would have never guessed. Why was she talking about Corpse Girl like a second person? This is so crazy. Got a few hours before I need to be at the morgue. Usual night shift. Not a good combination with an early morning. At least there is no evidence, no deliveries to make today for Noriko or for Corpse Girl. For the best. I guess if it's like they're different people, then he's like, what's the point of this? Is that kind of what he's going to get at? Like, uh, with the separation between Corpse Girl and Noriko? Because, yeah, technically he is helping Corpse Girl and not Noriko, you know what I mean? If Tomoe is quitting the business, we don't have a driver. Didn't really think that through when I encouraged her to go with her gut. Oh, well, that's on Noriko. She's the brains behind the operation. I'm simply the muscle, just like I always tell her. Corpse Girl told Noriko to kill people. That's what she said. That's what Noriko. What? Corpse Girl. That's what the person I know is Noriko told me. That begs a follow-up question. If Noriko isn't Corpse Girl, then who is? Oh, I guess he doesn't realize that yet. That it's just like, in, she's Corpse Girl's just inside her head. Is Corpse Girl a person? Someone whispering instructions in Noriko's ear? Has it always been the case? Was I so blindsided by Noriko's ambitions for Grandor that I disregard the truth behind her words? Is Noriko nothing but a puppet? Too many questions. Don Noriko will willingly spell it out for me, not if she's gone to such lengths to mask the truth for so long. When Corpse Girl first told me to start killing, I can't get the quote out of my head. Too many moving pieces in this puzzle. Noriko, Corpse Girl, the Human Removal Service, the Herald, Junpei Matsumoto, and Kenji Ogawa. Too many assumptions, too many shadowy figures. Makes me angry. Don't like it when I don't understand something. I'm clever, sharp, like to know everything. Like to predict what's going to happen next. Like to remain the one step ahead of everything I know. Right now. I feel three steps behind. Behind Noriko, behind whatever Corpse Girl is. 
Maybe Tomoe has the right idea. Maybe getting out of the situation is for the best. Though, could I really make a clean break? Could I really just walk away? No, bro. <laughs> You're the most obvious one. Noriko isn't afraid to play dirty. That has become increasingly more evident, especially with the Kinji situation. If I walked, would I have to be on guard for the rest of my life? Yes. Would I have to be cautious of every shadow that flits in the darkness? Yes. Would Corpse Girl come to claim me as her own? Maybe. That begs the question. Tomoe quits now, will Noriko try to buy her silence with blood? It's like, I want to think Noriko is better than that, but like... I don't think she is. <laughs> I don't think she is. <laughs> they are like besties now, but still. She'll do anything to ensure her name isn't dragged through the dirt. Tomoe knows too much, as much as me. She could compromise Noriko's entire operation if she lets the wrong words slip out in front of the wrong people. That is so true, bestie. You and Tomoe gotta team up and kill Noriko. And then live a perfectly normal good life. It's for the best. It's for the best. Come on. Because of that, I have to believe that Noriko won't stand for it. Tomoe's life will be in danger if she quits now. I don't know how. I don't know by what measure Noriko will strike from the shadows. The girl is weak, is weak of body, though strong of mind. And her ambitions are steeled by some otherworldly force of will. Noriko won't let Tomoe walk away from this. Speaking the words aloud and hearing the echo throughout my apartment helps reaffirm the truth. I have to warn Tomoe. I don't know if it's too late. I don't know if she's told Noriko that she'll be quitting. But there's no time to waste. Yeah, I was kind of surprised too that they didn't really like think about that too much in the other conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, oh! Can I help you? Shinya! Oh, I love Shinya. He's so cute. Tomoe in. Oh, a little cutie pie, dude. She's, uh, uh -oh. are you a friend of hers? Uh-oh. <laughs> Competition? Yeah. Um, mm. this is an emergency. Really? Uh, hang on. I'll go get her. I wait patiently as the guy I assume Tomoe's boyfriend goes to fetch her. It's fairly late now. The sun is setting. I might miss the start of my shift at the morgue. This is more urgent. Kujiro? Oh, she's so cute! Look at her little outfit! Oh, slay! What the fuck are you doing here? Need a word. Hmm. How'd you get my address? <sighs> you know what? I'd rather not know. <laughs> I'm just a creepy asshole. Come on. Who, you know me. Who is this guy? Oh. Why does he smell like- Uh-oh. He, he noticed, at least. <laughs> Long story. Is he bothering you? Should I, um... <laughs> yeah. Should I- Should I fight him for your honor? Fucking <laughs> Shinya, dude. Oh, there's no way he could even stand a half a chance. Should I- Take care of him? Yeah, Shinya, you <laughs> go for it, King. I just know. He like honestly, Shinya, I imagine him to have the strength of like uh Um so from your turn to die, honestly. <laughs> like can't even open up like a drawer or whatever. Or I think it was like a cabinet was like what so couldn't open up. God, that was so funny. My nostrils flare a little bit as I choke back a laugh. It's like, should I should I take care of him? It's like his voice cracks when he's trying to be tough. <clears throat> yeah, Tomoe, let me, just let me know, baby. This guy is pretty scrawny. I'm no mar martial arts champion, but I find it hard to believe he'd pose a threat to me. Nah, it's all good. <laughs> he's harmless, mostly. <laughs> mostly. I see. Shinya is the male wife, the perfect male wife. He flashes me an uninteresting glare. We need to talk. It's important. Fine, come in, come in. Him. Oh. I point a finger at the boyfriend. Oh god, this is so sketchy. He needs to go. Seriously? Yes, come on. What do you think I'm here to talk about? Ugh. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, fair point. I hope he doesn't think that there's, like, something going on between them, though. Because I want her and Shinya to be happy. Shinya, can you, like, clear off for a bit? Tomoe, I want to know what's going on here. Oh, so cute. Just, who is this guy? Is he an ex-boyfriend of yours? Because... Because I'll, I'll fight him. You just watch me. Oh, God. No need for that. No need to steal your girl. Just listen to him, Shinya. You've no need to worry. Fine then. <laughs> you can tell when I'm not wanted. No, he's crying too. Shinya, come back. Oh, I love Shinya. If anyone needs me, I'll be outside. Oh, poor little guy. Boyfriend storms off like an upset toddler, and I finally allow myself to crack a smile. What a catch. <laughs> Shut up. You don't know him like I do. Okay. Tomoe shuts the front door, leaving us alone in her apartment. So what the fuck is this all about? Ah, uh -huh, Shinya is so cute, dude. Need to know. Have you told Noriko you're quitting? Nah, not yet. 
Surely you could have asked me that over noise. Probs. I thought you might be in danger already. Danger? Why? I have a theory. Reckon Noriko will cut us up if we leave our merry band. <laughs> nah. Noriko and I are besties. She wouldn't hurt me. She do be she do be a crazy she do be one crazy motherfucker Don't though. Act so certain. Noriko will do anything to protect herself. That neighbor of hers? The guy that got arrested? Oh yeah. She set him up from the very start. She doesn't know about that yet. Made him take the fall so she wouldn't become a suspect. You're shitting me. Dead serious. And... We take a moment to consider the best way to announce my next theory. Don't think Noriko's working alone. Tomoe simply frowns at what I consider to be a startling revelation. Well, of course she's not. We're working with her. Guess I didn't explain it well enough. Not what I meant. Noriko. Noriko may not be the ringleader here like we assumed. She said, and I quote... When Corpse Girl first told me to start killing, end quote. <laughs> Tomoe's silent contemplation convinces me that I'm onto something. Something that neither of us has stumbled upon previously. I mean, we played as Noriko, so I was pretty sure she was just talking about, you know, her brain. Or like, you know, her... I don't know, it just seemed like she like referred... It was like her and Corpse Girl were like, you know... I don't want to say she had like split personalities because it didn't really seem like that. It just kind of seemed like, uh, I don't know, almost like light when he had like the Kira like kind of identity and then like his own identity. You know what I mean? It's like she thinks of them as two, two separate people, even though they're like both her. I don't know. Well, shit. I thought Noriko was Corpse Girl. She always calls herself that. In fact, she even admitted it to me once. Yeah, I remember it. I kind of suspected it and I asked her about it and she confirmed it. Sure about that? Hmm. Uh, well, pretty sure, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> now I'm starting to doubt myself. Girl, me too. I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, I'm pretty sure she, you know, explained, you know, yeah, it was her perfect self. That's what it was. Don't sweat it. The cold, the unflinching, perfect Noriko. Noriko does refer to herself as Corpse Girl. I'm sure of it. Right? I thought so. They do be pretty dumb, but they're both pretty. So, you know, we, <laughs> at least they have that. But. I'm still uneasy about it. Someone convinced her to start killing. And she seems to think it was Corpse Girl. Ugh. I don't get it. Neither do I. But I'll get to the bottom of it. Right. For now, for your own safety, don't tell Noriko you're quitting. It's kind of funny, honestly, knowing that they're wrong. When they're like so like adamant about it, he's like, I know I'm onto this, man. Seriously? I don't know how she'll react. Oh, wait, let me, uh... Say for now, for you, oh, don't tell, don't tell her you're quitting. Okay, I thought for a second he was gonna say he wanted to quit too. What a drag! I really don't want to do this anymore. Be patient. Give me a bit of time. You sure you can sort this out? Yeah. I'm not exaggerating my confidence. I'm determined to learn the truth about Noriko and the identity of Corpse Girl. Maybe I can figure out why this all started. Why Noriko is so intent on continuing down her path of destruction. Leave it to me. Thanks. Later then. I make my way to the front door and swing it open. I'm slightly startled when a heavy form stumbles into me. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> totally tries to like uh, hit him with his shoulders. Like that felt just like a bug landed on me. With his ear pressed up against the door, Tomoe's boyfriend couldn't avoid falling forward as the door opened. Uh -huh. I looked down at him sprawled on the floor groaning. You okay? <laughs> He'll be fine. Oh God, did he hear anything? Get up, Shinya. He clambers to his feet and dusts off his trousers. I don't think Shinya would stay with Tomoe if she actually told him everything. I was uh, just um. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. Oh my god. Don't have time for this. I push past him and wake, make my way out of the apartment complex. Oh man. Oh my god! Yes, Kiri. <laughs> oh my god, Kyoko, Kiri, Kiri. Thank you for the dono. Someone draw Shinya in a maid outfit, please. Yes. Oh my. god. God, I can at least do like an edit, like a edit I could post on like the Reddit or something later. I'm not good at drawing, but I could do like a Photoshop of it. Oh my God, just like edit his face on Akane, Akane's body. The place is empty, devoid of life, nothing out of the ordinary there. Or I guess I could do it on uh, Aoi's body. Maybe that would fit better too. Though, something is off. It's too empty. Glancing around the walls of cold chambers, I immediately noticed something suspicious. Majority of the chamber doors aren't sealed shut. 
They're slightly ajar, as though the last person to access them didn't close them properly. Would never do such a thing. I know to press the doors firmly enough that they lock in place. Leaving a cold chamber, unsealed in a surefire way to assist in a cadaver's deterioration. And an unsealed chamber allows the odor of decay to leak into the morgue. Right now, I don't smell anything out of the ordinary. Meaning... These cold chambers are empty. Someone has removed the cadavers that were stored inside. This place was full full to the brim just a day ago. There wasn't a single empty cold, cold chamber. Oh, now. A cursory glance shows that a good 90% of the cold chambers are... Oh, Jesus Christ. Fuck. Ah! The Herald, is he here? My initial sense of uncertainty gives way to panic. I jog towards the left wall of chambers and start pulling the sliding trays out one by one. Empty, empty, empty. <laughs> God, I'm getting like flashbacks from SDRA2. One after the other. Each chamber is devoid of its macabre con contents. Even the HRPs have been removed. Shit. Oh, fuck. I come across the cold chamber that is sealed. That is still sealed. I press the release button in as I pull the handle. Oh, is it going to be so, like a corpse that looks like him? That'd be kind of interesting. The familiar hiss of cold air escaping from the hollow space does little to ally my fears. I slide the tray out and sigh. Oh, it's no em empty too. It would seem that even the properly closed chambers have been evacuated. Fuck shit, fuck shit. Oh my god, Sora's the Herald, guys. We figured it out. That's it. That was it the whole time. Sora, what are you doing here, silly? And this isn't Dong and Rampa. I dash to the opposite wall, the row of cold chambers that store his body bodies not due for cremation. The row that Noriko isn't allowed to access. But just like the other wall, every chamber is empty. Doors ajar, unsealed, empty. I thoroughly check each and every one. No luck. I trudge towards the computer, at the far wall. Log logging into the inventory, I scan through the list of recent arrivals and departures. No bodies came in today. Unusual, but, but not itself a cause for concern. More importantly, no bodies have been checked off as removed from the premises. Each and every body that has disappeared from this place has not been accounted for. The corrupt protocols have not been adhered to. I can only draw one conclusion. The morgue has been robbed. It's gotta be the other people. We gotta kill Junpei. Come on, I wanna kill him some more. I wanna slay some more, Koji. Sorry to rock up so late. It's fine. I was awake. Okay. Bad news. Hit me. Morgue's been plundered. Plundered? <laughs> what? Are you a pirate? <laughs> Saws. <sighs> Wait. Your tone. You're not joking. No. Explain. I think the Herald is actually Mitch. That's so true. It's gotta be him. It all makes fucking sense. It's like every game I play it somehow ends up being Mitch. Has the mastermind of all of them. All the cadavers have been stolen. Cold chambers are completely empty. Fuck. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. How could you let this happen? Me? <laughs> I'm no security guard. Don't put this on me. This is the girl you're in love with. Just like think about that, Koji. There's so there's so many good girls out there. Why? Why Noriko? Despite the fact she's having a Noriko moment, I don't miss the fear in her voice. Appease. <laughs> Wrong. Appease. Corpse girl. Who is corpse girl? Not something you'd say if referring to yourself. She's no. She's just crazy. She's clearly referring to someone else. Some other being. T uh, uh, Noriko moment. <laughs> this, is, oh my god, so true. This is a certified Noriko moment. Time to put her on the spot. Sick of always being three steps behind. Who's Corpse Girl? What? Who is she? Don't act dense. I'm Corpse Girl. If you're trying to be funny, it isn't working. Now isn't the time. Can we kill her and not Tomoe? <laughs> I, it's like, I find Noriko an interesting character, but come on, she kinda... If anybody deserves to get slayed, it's Noriko. We've lost everything, Kojiro. I've got a couple of bodies here at the factory, but they're allocated to victims already. Corpse Girl gets any new requests? We won't be able to fulfill them. There, you did it again. You referred to Corpse Girl as another person. Can you stop messing around? Don't you see how serious this is? Oh my god, the epic music. 
I do. I do. I see how serious the situation has become. Noriko. <laughs> Noriko is Delulu. <laughs> you finally realized it? Girl. Oh my, she's been drinking the Delulu juice the whole time. She has not been drinking coffee. All Delulu juice. You just don't realize. She refers to Corpse Girl both as herself and as another person. <laughs> She pays no heed to the difference in her words, even when called out on it. She doesn't seem to be aware that she's doing it. Could it be a personality disorder? Can't place blame on her if that's the case. Yeah, it does remind me of the holy background, like, uh, music in Death Note, too. I think the same thing, Brie. But I think it's more than that. She believes she's being guided or goaded by Corpse Girl, forced to achieve her ambitions. There's more to it than a personality disorder. Something I'm not seeing. So, what do we do? <sighs> what can we do? You'll have to break into another morgue. Start stealing corpses for me. Oh, girl. <laughs> Always me doing shit for you. Why don't you start working? What was that Kim K quote? It's like, get your ass up and work. Okay, Norika, that's what I'm going to tell you, girl. No. Yes! Slay Kojiro! Oh, my God. His Kim K moment. Get your ass up and work, Noriko. What do you mean, no? Don't say no to me. No. I'd do just about anything for you, but sometimes you need to know when to call it. There's no moving forward from here. I know, Erica's so talented, dude. She does so good as Noriko. I can't give up, Kojiro. I've come so far. Somebody oh. stole the cadavers from the morgue. <laughs> not the tears, not the waterworks already. I just, it's so sad. I just want to kill people, Kojiro. I'm so sorry. From my morgue. Somebody who knows what I'm involved in. It wasn't an attempt to stop what we're doing. What do you mean? It was a message. Whoever did it wanted to prove that they are more powerful than we are. Pulling several hundred stiffs from a morgue all at once without getting busted. I don't know how they do that. That's something even we couldn't achieve. <laughs> Someone knows our operation, inside and out. Someone knows what we do and how we do it. And they wanted to prove that they can do it better. Human removal service. Who else? Damn it. Hope you can see the truth now. We gotta go back to Junpei and freaking like, we gotta question him some more, dude. We can't continue with them in the picture. Yeah, Erica, she's Venti from Genshin, and she's also Kaide in V3. You're right. Pretty crazy. She has really good range. Our next move is to destroy them. Destroy the Herald. That wasn't exactly what I was getting at. I was only trying to discourage Noriko from continuing with her operation. What do you propose? Nah, she's all in. You said you'd do nearly anything for me, right? Oh yeah, she's Iba from Somnia Files too. More or less. Uh, I love Iba. Then, hunt down Junpei Matsumoto. Again, he needs to reveal the identity of his leader. Right. <laughs> right. Didn't work so well last time. Can't forget that night. Had the guy beaten and bruised on the ground. Stubborn pup. You were interrupted last time. Aoi got in the way, didn't she? Yeah. Tried to defend her boyfriend. I guess Noriko could, like, hang out with Aoi during this, like, next confrontation so he can, like, know for sure he'll be able to have time to kill him. You need to extract information from Junpei at any cost. And yet again, I'm running errands for Noriko. When you're done, kill him. I have no problem with that. But if Aoi is present again, I'll have to back down. A few seconds of silence makes the makes me ponder if Noriko still has her head in the conversation. I'm about to repeat myself when she finally speaks. If Aoi interferes, the waterworks yet again. Kill her. <gasps> oh my God! Really? Really? I just thought she was gonna hang out with her to like distract her. Oh my! Not Aoi. No, even she's not sacred. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Noriko. What is wrong with you? Oh my God. <laughs> bro, bro. She will stop at nothing. <laughs> she does not fucking give a shit. And just like that, Noriko's true heart is revealed. She will stop at nothing to achieve her goals. <laughs> oh my God. I was right to fear for Tomoe. It's like, yeah! Dude, for real? God, if she's willing to slay Aoi, she's definitely willing to kill Tomoe. That's not even a fucking question, honestly. I was right to fear for my own. The fuck 
fucking tears too. I'm just so, I'm so sad about it, God. It's gonna be so sad if you kill Owie. Oh well, then I won't have competition on who's pretty, on who's the prettiest anymore. Noriko will cut down her best friend in the world. Dude, she's literally in love with. Then she will show no mercy to anyone else. This kind of resolve, the steel-hearted determination. I can't help. <laughs> what? These fucking characters, dude. I can't help but admire. Admire it. God, I'm even more in love with her than I was from the first day. <laughs> I can't with these people. Every time I think they're gonna be like, you know, maybe this is a little crazy. Maybe I should back up and like, you know, reevaluate my life. He's like, no. I respect her. Respect the slay. If I do this for you, I want something in return. What? Be with me. Nah! Fucking Misa Misa ass. You still want me? Still that girl, I'm asking the same I'm literally asking the same thing. I'm like, really? You still want her after all this? I've never wanted you more. <laughs> I'm in love with you, Noriko. In case that wasn't clear before. <laughs> okay. Take care of this issue for me. And you can call me yours. I'll be your girlfriend, or your wife, or your mistress. Whatever you want. <laughs> this is so toxic! <laughs> I'm like, yeah. The most toxic shit ever! Jesus. My heart will be yours. That's all I wanted to hear, baby! All I needed to hear. I don't want to be alone. <laughs> I do feel like, I don't know, I feel like Misa had, like, better reasons to be obsessed with Light. I'm like, I guess he's just down bad, you know what I mean? He's just real down bad. <laughs> That's, like, all I'm getting from him. And she looks like his ex-girlfriend. Well, I guess, yeah, she looks like his ex-girlfriend. So that might be kind of where the obsession uh, is brimming from, too. But I'm just like, man, why? Why do you like her? How don't you see who she is? I don't want to be alone anymore. I don't feel lonely. Noriko, Shizuko, even Tomoe, it doesn't fucking matter. I'll take Shinya. I just want someone to love me, to hold me. Okay. Can you just look? Dude, just look at the chat. They're right there. They're literally like right there. Just look at the chat. They'll take you. They will literally take you. I'm on it. Leave it to me. Oh my god. I don't know if I'll take you anymore though. <laughs> I might leave you to Jeff at this point. I'm putting my faith in you. <laughs> A step back, turn around, look up, stare at the stairs in the pollution clouded sky. When we get together, perhaps we can live in Noriko's apartment with Shizuke. Oh my god. Thank you, Mumu Dakao. Please save us, Tomoe. We <laughs> it's like the only. Her and Shinya, for real, the only normal characters in this fucking game. And thank you, Jeff. This is why you should have gone for the girl. <laughs> I admit it. I was wrong. I was wrong. I should have gone for the girl. <laughs> I should have gone for the girl up. It's too much for me now. It's too much. Oh god, I sent for Tom away now. I'm going for the girl up. Oh god. My old place. It will be like coming home after a long absence. Noriko replaced Shizuko in my heart. And life will go on. <laughs> bro. Bro. I fucking can't, dude. Dude, if he kills Aoi too, that's gonna be fucking wild. I wanna see, y'all still simping for Koji in the chat? I'm kinda curious. I'm curious, how many, how many simps is Jeff still, uh, Jeff is still simping for Koji? <laughs> I'll take Kojiro, don't worry. I should have known from a, from a freaking show by apologist. <laughs> Granted, I'm a Kinjo apologist, so I got no judgments. It's the same stakeout as last time. Junpei Masumoto, in his infinite wisdom, posted on- <laughs> In his infinite wisdom, posted on noise about visiting the maid cafe today. Don't know why he doesn't set his profile to private. Especially after I followed him home last night. But I won't be following him again today. I kind of- I wonder if after I finish this, we could do like a poll on who our favorite- On who everybody's favorite character is in chat. I'm kind of curious because I feel like it's literally- This game is so like up and down. Like, I'm like, I hate Tomoe. I love her. I only hated Tomoe at first. But like, it's just like the characters you think are bad don't end up being that bad. The characters you think are good end up being like so bad. 
<laughs> I'm just kind of curious though. I think most people stand Tomoe though. <laughs> but I won't be following him again today. Tomoe is the best. I'll confront him inside the maid cafe, a place where Aoi is unlikely to be since she quit the job a while ago. Although, did she really quit? If memory serves, she was dressed as a maid last time I encountered her. Huh. It's not that I have qualms about <laughs> killing her, whatever. In fact, I'm not even bothered that Noriko is okay with or <laughs> with ordering her death. I thought he was bothered for just a little bit, man. I'm thinking about the future. When Noriko and I marry, we'll want friends and family to attend the wedding. Noriko will need bridesmaids. A maid of honor. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking simp. I cannot with him. I mean, she's gonna be kind of sad if we kill all her friends. She can't even have a maid of honor. I'll be perfect for one of those roles. By sparing her life now, I can kick off my new life with Noriko on a high note. I'm aware other people will be present in the cafe. I have no intention of hurting them. I'll force as many as possible to evacuate, or I'll corner Junpei somewhere private. The dog himself arrives as I'm playing through possible scenarios in my head. He waltzes through the front door, completely oblivious to my presence across the street. I give him some time. Let him get comfortable, lower his guard. The weight of the blade inside my pocket is unfamiliar. Not like it's so heavy that it will restrict my movement. Just feels strange. Figured it was better to not tackle this unarmed. It's an emergency measure. After 20 minutes, I approach the maid cafe's entrance. Oh my Jesus Christ. Oh, we're actually in here. Oh wow, it's so bright. Not a fan of the atmosphere. Too flashy for me. I prefer somewhere more simple, laid back. Is he really gonna kill him here? Come on, bro. Jube has a table near the far wall alone. Not that I expected any different. A blonde maid trots over to refill his drink. He nods politely, but doesn't say a word. Hasn't seen me come in yet. Somebody asks if I want a table. I don't respond. Someone else chimes in. Something about paying the cover charge. I don't know. My attention's on the dog. Bro, how do you expect to get, get away with this when you're gonna, like, fucking kill him in, like, a public restaurant in the middle of the day? No one attempts to hold me back as I, <laughs> as I march towards my prey. He finally sees me, but I'm five steps away and it's too late. Oh, what the? <laughs> Why do I kind of feel bad for Junpei now? Long time. Oh, God. You're crazy, man. Get away from me. Looking at him close up, it doesn't seem... Too worse for wear, considering our last encounter. I start to wonder if I went too easy on Can him. Sit here? Hell no! <laughs> Get out of here! Come on, I just wanna go on a little date, Junpei. Come on, let's do the BL route. We already got the GL route, come on. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, he's so sassy. I pull up a chair and sit directly across from him. I gotta say, I admire, I really admire Kojiro's sassiness. The blonde maid from before offers me a menu. Then she grasps. Then she gasps as I hear something shatter on the floor. <gasps> yep. You. Strange. Ali didn't quit her job after all. Did she lie to Noriko? Did Noriko lie to me? I'm ninety percent sure it's her, anyways. Stay back, babe. I got this. <laughs> babe. <laughs> yep, it's her. I feel like if there's any character that's ever given me like Mitch vibes, it's Junpei for some reason. Granted, all the characters are significantly worse in this game, but I don't know. Just something about Junpei gives me Mitch vibes. <laughs> Stand back behind me, babe. <laughs> yeah, it's her. Thought you quit. Huh? Oh, yeah, she is back. Thought you quit this job. What? How would you know that? Uh, uh, no reason. Oh, uh, now I gotta kill you. Oopsie. Oopsie poopsie. I realize that I shouldn't spill any details on my relationship with Noriko. Forget it. How the fuck does he expect her to be the maid of honor at their wedding when he's like just about to murder her boyfriend, dude? Yo, oh, you think you're hot stuff, right? Tailing me, beating me up, and now you're digging into my girl's business? The fuck is wrong with you, man? Excuse me for a second. I stand up slightly and lean over the table. Uh. Oh my god, he's really gonna do this here. Really gonna do this. And he expects for Aoi to be like, yeah, totally, I'll definitely be the best, <laughs> the maid of honor at your wedding. <laughs> god. Sorry, have to do it. I sit back down and wipe the bloody knuckles with a napkin. Junpei clutches his face and sobs. Aoi is visibly shaking, standing next to her dog, unsure how to react. By some miracle, I don't think anyone else has witnessed the punch. 
For the best means we can get down to business without an eruption. I guess he's just so excited about like, you know, getting to marry Noriko that he doesn't even, he's not even thinking about like doing it in private. Cause last time he tailed him, you know, like, you know, last time we tailed him and went somewhere private. Some questions for you. Ah! Ah! I broke my nose. <laughs> Shush. Haven't asked my question yet. He's so sassy. Shush. Oh, he somehow gathers the courage to flee. I don't watch her leave, but I get the sense she's gone to fetch help. What do you know about the robbery of the hospital morgue? Oh, that's true. He'll just say Saws once he kills, you know, once he kills her boyfriend. And I'll be like, Saws, but like, also, can you please come to the wedding? I don't know what you're talking about. It'd mean a lot to us. No, not the answer I wanted. Junpei makes the mistake of possessing... <laughs> Not again! <laughs> no, the fleshy sound, dude! A jam a steel fork into the back of his left thumb and pin it to the wooden table. Blech. You're going to give me the answers I want. Am I clear? <laughs> You're not case. You're psycho. No. For my next question, how did you find out about my involvement with Corpse Girl? <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Jump. <laughs> I mean, the police are definitely gonna show up to this. He didn't do anything about Aoi running. I'm assuming the other maids are doing the same thing, dude. It seems that Junpei is carefully weighing his response for the first time. Also, I kind of love that we're having like this really intense like bloodbath in this adorable ass cafe with like heart seats and stuff. Instead of outright defiance, he wisely chooses to grant me a satisfactory answer. It wasn't hard, man. You're not the most stealthy dude around, you know? Explain. You and that blonde gal girl, Tomoe Watanabe, you're not cautious enough. Yeah, for real. So he knows Tomoe's identity and her involvement. The sound is truly a liability. It's not hard to tell you when you drive that hunk of shit van around town. Dropping dead bodies off to corpse girls' targets. Yeah, for real. I don't know why they think that they're being like so like low key about it. Oh, thank you, Kyoko. Imagine if Ao <laughs> no! Imagine if Owie falls for Koji Khan. I mean, if she even like brushes past him accidentally, he'll be like, "Wow, that touch! It's like the touch I've never received in my whole life." Oh, she must be loving me. <laughs> Oh god, thank you for the dono. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Kojiro, Sawzowie. Your BF put up a fight, though. GG, see ya. <laughs> so basically, his conversations, literally the only things he said to her last time was like, Saws and later. <laughs> like, he's so weird, man. <laughs> he knows a lot. Thank you, Jeff, for the donation, too. Way too much. How far does this knowledge extend? I see. My next question, then. Oh, shit. Do you know Corpse Girl's identity? <laughs> Uh. I think the real question is, do you? I consider his words, do I know Corpse Girl's identity? Beginning to doubt that. Had he asked me a week ago, I would have thought Noriko immediately. Now. The way that Noriko has been referring to Corpse Girl, I'm not so certain. But I won't let this wound, this wounded mud have the upper hand. I won't let him pry open gaps in my defense. Wrong answer. Oh, Jesus. The only other piece of cold... Cutlery in my hand is a metal spoon. Don't, 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 don't. Please no. Please no. Please don't scoop his eye or some shit. I can't, I can't handle it. Ah! His hand! Ugh! I drive the slightly pointed rear end of it into the pointer finger of Junpei's already injured. But he's got- what is up with him in hands? <laughs> Why is he blushing? I'm dead! <laughs> It is pretty funny, the sprite's like kind of blushing while, while he was saying that. And yeah, at least it wasn't the eye. Corpse girl's identity? Oh god. <laughs> Fine. Noriko Kurosawa. Oh dude, he knows! Interesting. I see. Oh shit. I had to tap on my shoulder from behind, causing me to turn. Leave. Leave him alone. Girl, what are you gonna do? Girl, call the police! Oh, he has somehow gathered a half dozen other bystanders. They're all glaring at me, fist, fist clenched, ready to try and forcibly remove me from the premises. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. We're not done here. Come back later. Let my Jinpei go! Stop hurting him! 
For an outwardly meek girl, Aoi has more courage than I expected. I stand up, stretch my neck. I'm now looking for a fight with a bunch of cafe patrons. Heavy, heaving a sigh, I dip my hand into my pocket and withdraw the knife. Oh, fuck! Flashing in front of the mob says more than my words ever could. They all back off, a few letting out snivels of dis despair! Owie, either, of, either out of bravery or fear, holds her ground. Is, oh, wow! Oh, no. Is Owie about to die? Oh, Jesus. A single watery tear welling in her eye, her left eye discloses her true feelings. Leave. Everyone. Now. Doesn't take more than this animalistic primitive command to convince the crowd to disperse and rush for the door. Owie is amongst the fleeing throng and she mouths the word sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Junpei. Saz, Junpei. Uh, she catches Junpei's eyes. She said, Saz, Junpei, what do you want her to do, okay? Satisfied that we will not be interrupted further, I return my attention to Junpei. He sobs. <laughs> Why do I feel bad for Junpei now? Don't kill me, man. I'll do whatever you want, you know? Bro, you've been saying. You haven't. <laughs> He's not been cooperative, though. Please, I'm begging you. I've got my whole life ahead of me. Relax. Only one more question for you. What? What is it? It was like, is anybody gonna cause the police? Who runs the cause? human removal Call service? The police. Who is the herald? I. I'm being completely honest with you, man. Oh no. Oh. I don't know who he is. He wears this creepy ass mask and never speaks. Okay, it could be a woman then, actually. Can't quite tell if the dog is being sincere or lying through his teeth. So I kind of feel like it's Owie then, maybe. I need more than that. Then she just started dating him to get close to him, you know what I mean? Who would know his identity? To get close with him without revealing her identity, you know what I mean? Shit. Um, look, man. The Human Removal Service. Man. It's only the two of us. Me and the Herald. He recruited me online, you know? You know, put, put an ad on our Craigslist, whatever. It makes me do his leg work. So, if I don't know who he is, no one does. Except him, of course. Not good enough. Not the answer I'm looking for. I'll lean over the table once more, keeping my knife clearly within the dog's vision. Not happy with that answer. Oh my god. Pick a finger. Shit, no, dude, seriously. Ask me a different question. Oh my god! Please, please. Kojiro. Huh? What the? Girl? A voice I didn't expect to hear rings out from behind me. Michael. Enough. Oh, how did you get here? Why are you here? I overheard everything. It's enough information to use. Am I imagine? What did she get here, dude? Is it? Yuriko strides forward. It's a little unnerving seeing her in the real world, away from the factory. She's been cooped up there for so long. Her pale skin looks almost otherworldly beneath this cafe, cafe's gaudy lights. For whatever reason, she's wearing her best clothes. They're almost clean, as though she recently did her own laundry. She walks with purpose, one foot in front of the other, but her gait is unsteady and she's visibly trembling. At the end of her path, she rests her palms on Junpei's table and takes a calming breath. Is she gonna wanna kill him, though? You stole the corpses from the morgue. No. Yes. Yuriko doesn't miss a beat as she flashes her phone at Junpei. I can't see what's displayed on the screen, but the dog hangs his head almost immediately. It was me. Oh, <laughs> okay, so just now he is gonna admit it. I robbed the morgue. What? That response was so weird. Huh. So... It was like, did she just gaslight him? <laughs> I mean, I guess she could have had, like, you know, proof that he did it, but it just seemed like such a weird response. Like, he was, like, hypnotized or something. Bandages. Junpei hastily grabs the offering with his good hand. Get out of here. Oh, Get shit. Allie to bandage you up. I don't. I mean, like, not that I want... Not that I would encourage them to do any more, like, killing, but they really should kill this guy, honestly. I guess, like, they might have the leverage of him working with the other group that they can't, like, um, whatchamacallit, um, you know, turn them in, but still. And not a word of this to the police. Like, is he gonna listen? How, do, how are you gonna know he's gonna listen? Oh, blackmailed him with Aoi's death, probably. Oh, I could see that, I could see that. Yes. <laughs> I should play the Juku brainwash bit. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> with a great deal of effort and grimace, Junpei plucks the cultury cutlery from his pierced hand and yelps. Not a, not daring to remain in my presence any longer, he bolts towards the door. But we're just letting him go? Yes. Yeah, for real. Don't understand. You don't need to. Is it just so, like, she doesn't have to be with, uh, what's his face? Don't like that. Don't feel comfortable not knowing what's going on. What did you show him on your phone? Leave it, Kojiro. Oh my god. Put the knife away. We're leaving. Ugh, I obey your orders. Returning the knife to my pocket. Yeah, literally there's like 12 witnesses too, like... <laughs> like, I, I don't know what they expect to happen. I follow her unsteady lead and we exit empty the empty maid cafe. Like, there's no way to keep that quiet, like... At all. Noriko grasps unhealthily as she quickly consumes her weight in water. With a loud swallow, she brings her sleeve to her lips and wipes her mouth dry. The empty water bottle clatters against the concrete, and Noriko's gaze returns to me. That's a bit better. The visit to the maid cafe got the better of her. She spent too much energy intervening in the confrontation. Man, she is getting so weak. I was like, I feel like she's eating even less now that she's, like, living in the factory, you know? But her motives for doing so remain unclear. Fill me in. There's no need to kill Junpei. Why? He knows everything. For real. Knows me. Knows Tomoe. He knows... You. Noriko hesitates, but she doesn't flinch at the revelation. Something tells me she already knew this much. Jinpei Matsumoto will be dead by sunrise. Huh. I made a request, Kojiro. On the other website? A request? The first thought that jumps out to me, she requested for Corpse Girl to kill Junpei. That's ridiculous, isn't it? I see. I don't think Corpse Girl can take care of him. He knows her whole operation. Noriko's raised eyebrow conveys her confusion. What? No. I didn't make a request through Corpse Girl's website. What would be the point of that? I shrug because I truly don't know what else she could have meant. Use the other website, the Human Removal Service. I made a request for the death of Junpei Matsumoto. Oh. But again, what good would that do? Junpei is an accomplice. If his colleague, the Vernable... The Vernable? The Vernable. Supposedly immortal Herald receives the request to kill him. It simply will be ignored. Nah, that guy's just as fucked up as we are. Unless... A startling realization dawns on me. Shit. Of course. Why didn't I suggest that? A haunting smirk is inscribed across Noriko's features. She knows that I have finally drawn to the same conclusion. The Herald is ambitious. His convictions are strong. Absolute. Just like mine. Like... Corpse Girls. Corpse Girls' convictions, huh? Corpse Girl would never reject a request. That's right. Junpei Matsumoto is disposable. A pawn. The Herald will deal death to him in the same manner as any other nameless victim. I see. But... More important than Junpei being killed is what we will discover in the aftermath. Explain. By knowing that Junpei is the next to be targeted, we can observe him and witness the Herald's killing method firsthand. Ah. Uh, it's brilliant. Noriko has laid the perfect trap. Okay, that makes sense then. By sparing Junpei's life today, we have set him up to be slaughtered by his own comp compatriot compa compatri compatriot. And we can use his death as a means to uncover exactly how the Herald brings low his victims. I have to add it to you. L learning new words every day. This is a pretty fantastic plan. I know. A few things. You have doubts? Not doubts, exactly. Firstly, how do we know exactly when Junpei will be killed? Riko sweeps her hair behind her ear and scoffs, as though the answer should be as clear to me as it is to her. I specifically requested the time of death. You can do that? Huh. The Human Removal Service demands it. Interesting. Hmm. Second topic. It's just like the person for the human removal service is like literally like Yagami. <laughs> they just, they got the uh, approval, the copyright approval from Oba. What if you're wrong? What? What if the Herald isn't willing to kill his own ally? In that <laughs> case, it will prove something important. It will prove that we are dealing with a complete amateur. Someone whose convictions could never reach the strength of corpse girls. And just like that, Noriko reaffirmed my earlier suspicions. Corpse Girl truly would destroy her own allies in order to see her ambitions fulfilled. Tomoe, myself. Our souls are shackled to Corpse Girl's own black void, yet we are not safe from her wrath. 
Shinoriko, will it? Our flames will be snuffed out in moments. We are nothing to her. Dirt. Dust. Ash. We will be blown away like the useless incinerator remains of a cadaver. Understood. Let's uncover the secrets But you still love it, huh, Bessie? Service. Like, he has all these realizations, but he's still just like, oh, I stand. Yes, Noriko, slay, or I guess I'll slay for you since you never do anything yourself. <laughs> just boss me around. Girl boss me, Noriko, yes. Another early morning. Honestly, I kind of did. Dizzy, I was thinking somebody honestly would request for Kojiro, like, during his arc. Like, when he got that box, it ended up being, like, the French press. But for a second, I was like, what if we find out, like, what exactly... Like, how exactly the other people kill, like, through Kojiro's death. I feel like I could see them doing something like that, but uh, I feel like I've been pretty wrong about a lot of my predictions so far. <laughs> but we'll see. If you can call it that. I haven't gone to sleep yet, so it still feels like late... Like, late night. It'd be kind of interesting if Tomoe requested Noriko's death. I guess she likes Noriko too much, and she's too much of a sweetheart, but, uh... You know, if Tomoe does want to get out of this, like, maybe... Maybe she should consider it, you know what I mean? Noriko has me on a short leash. Thinks she knows it, too. Apparently, she specified this is the place of Junpei's death. Don't know how she knew of it. This parking complex belongs to Junpei's apartment building. It extends two or three levels underground. Again, Noriko specified the exact location of the death. The human removal service seems to take users' requests very seriously. How much further in? Shh. Keep your voice down. I'm just looking for a good vantage point that we can hide. Her words are severe, severed by a violent gasp. Oh. Unable to speak another word, she simply points. My eyes obediently follow the direction of her slender figure. He dies of a heart attack. Oh, hey! Come on, the Herald is not a man. That is literally Owie. Oh my god. That looks like a cute little anime girl. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's a man. A big burly man. <laughs> like, you can even see like the outline of her boobs. <laughs> She's wearing a skirt. Oh. Disappointing. Missed the main event. Hey, Owie. What's up, girly? Junpei Matsumoto is already dead. He's floating in a sea of his own lifeblood. Vicious stab wounds practically glow red along his back. What do you mean red? It's gotta be pink. After examining his remains, I turn my attention to the less interesting figure standing motionless beside- It literally looks exactly like Aoi. Like, he was literally dating her. How do you not realize that, like, the body outline is, is exactly Aoi? You. Oh my god. The masked stranger looks like the villain from a B-rated slasher film. He's covered from head to toe in dark clothing. A zipped up jacket with extra long sleeves, hood and a skirt. The cut of the figure's clothes combined with his physique gives me the impression that he may in fact be female. Is this the Herald we've been searching for? The bloody corpse at her feet would suggest that it is so. That mask. Shinya wearing a skirt, oh my god, I would die. I would honestly love that. It's simple, white, probably porcelain. It's reminiscent of something, some fictional character, maybe some film villain after all? The Herald still hasn't moved. It's like the scream mask is what they're thinking of. She's still, she's, she's as still as a statue, gaze vacant, her eyes impossible to discern behind the mask. Are you the Herald? Uh, what's up, bestie? <laughs> For the first time, the figure moves. It's a startling jerk motion, like a mannequin or a puppet being pulled by strings. Her head cocks to the side. She seems to notice our presence for the first time. But an answer to Noriko's question is not forthcoming. A step up to the plate. You really immortal? The Herald doesn't react to my voice like she reacted to Noriko's. She has returned to a stiff doll-like state. Pretty easy to prove if someone or something is immortal. And I've always had a curious mind. I draw the knife from my pocket and launch it at the mannequin. The blade embeds itself in the thing's shoulder, and she doesn't so much as flinch as a trickle of blood pulls around the shining steel. It's referring to her as a mannequin too. Interesting. Emmy! Oh god, I fucking uh, wish. Mr. Hart. Hojiro, why did you do that? I shrug and take a step for toward the Herald before Noriko tugs at my coat and holds me back. She takes my place and puts herself between me and the Herald. Tell us who you are. We deserve to know that much. Something in Noriko's words, the sound of her voice, or the tone of her plea, causes the Herald to move once more in acknowledgement. But the motion this time is quick, fast, calculated. 
The Herald moves a sleeved hand to withdraw the knife from her shoulder, and she allows the blade to drop down to the concrete ground with a dull ting. Before the knife hits the ground, the Herald turns her back to us and breaks into a sprint. Oh, God. Come on, we gotta chase her! Gotta get... Gotta get Owie! Not gonna have a chase her. It would be so epic if it was Emmy, honestly. Don't bother. We won't catch up. The Herald disappears into the darkness of the parking lot. We are left standing by the corpse of Junpei Masumoto. <sighs> we didn't see the killing. At least the request was granted. She's right. Her gambit has paid off. The Herald killed her own ally. She has proven her convictions are strong. I crouch to examine Junpei's corpse, but it's hard to get a good look in the darkness. <laughs> I'm scared. Holds my cat to cuddle. I feel you, honestly. I need my cat, too. Oh my god, is that... Wait. Is that Koji with cat ears, actually, now that I look? <laughs> Your profile picture? <laughs> oh my goodness! That's so cute. Thank you for the dono, Kyoko Kirigiri. Regardless, it's clear that the dog is dead. Should we leave the body? Mm, going to send a text. Huh? Who are you messaging? See if I can pull a few strings. Wouldn't mind if the corpse ended up at my morgue. What are you planning? Nothing. Really. Just want to prod and poke a bit. Noriko's subsequent grunt is a clear indication that she doesn't fully believe me. <sighs> Do what you want. I've gained as much from this as I had hoped. Litter trail off as I turn my attention to my phone. I swipe through my contacts and quickly compose a message to a few people in particular. If all goes well, an investigation team will shortly arrive to examine the scene. I'll be gone by then, but... If my contacts do their job correctly, they'll haul Junpei back to the morgue. I pocket my phone and scurry towards the blood-soaked knife as I, la I launch at the Herald. It slides back into my pocket and I sig signal for Noriko that we should depart. Goodbye, Junpei Matsumoto. Oh god, she's blushing too. She waves half-heartedly at the corpse and lets out a childlike giggle. <laughs> Fucking evil laugh, more like it. I accidentally punched Nut Mitch Nut off the table, actually. Oh no! <laughs> I bumped Mitch Nut when I was like freaking out over, I don't even remember what scene, and now he's in the trash! No, Mitch Nut, I literally threw you away in the trash! I'm so sorry, baby! <laughs> okay, I gotta wash him though, because it's kind of gross. <laughs> no, Mitch Nut, I betrayed you. That's so sad, dude. That is so freaking sad. A scant few hours sleep didn't offer much in the way of refreshments. I have to be at the morgue again in an hour. Not that there is much to do there since the place was robbed. Perhaps a few more cadavers will have arrived. Perhaps Junpei Matsumoto's corpse will be there. I should take this opportunity to take a break. I'm gonna have to wash Mitch Nut now. <laughs> Poor little guy. That's so sad though. I was just like, oh yeah, I remember him falling down. And I was like, no, he's literally perfectly in the trash. So sad, dude. Oh god, literally Mitch Nut's execution. <laughs> oh my god. I should take this opportunity to take a breath. Been a while since life slowed down like this. No requests coming through for Corpse Girl. No bodies to haul around town with Tomoe. No cadavers to catalog at the morgue. Life should be good. I'm still alone. And Oriko may decide to discard me at any moment. Why does that make me want her mark? <laughs> Bro, you got so many issues. I can't with you. Do I want to prove my worth, my value? Prove to her that I'm worth keeping around? You know, I simp pretty hard for Misa, and I'm kind of wondering if I saw Misa's like inner dialogue, would I stop simping for her <laughs> like I'm done with Koji? <laughs> Don't know. Does it matter in the long run? I feel like Misa was more just like Delulu, honestly. After brewing myself a cup of coffee using the French press Tomoe gifted me, I take my seat in my chair. Sitting alone in the darkness is somewhat depressing, but it's only temporary. I won't be alone forever. Soon, Noriko will sit with me. We'll be together, together in the darkness. The dark void in my heart. I'll make her see my worth. I'll make her love me the way that I love her. She better fucking do it. I'll make her fill the void that Shizuko left in my life. I'll make her treat the gnawing pain in my insides. <laughs> God, this fucking emo poetry. I'll make her treat the gnawing pain of my insides. I'll make her save me for falling into despair, for falling into old habits. Nuriko will save me for myself, just like Shizuka once did. I just started doing the emo voice for him. 
<laughs> it works. <laughs> Take a sip of my coffee. Still a little hot. It scalds the gap in my mouth where... <laughs> you gotta still keep bringing that up, huh, homie? Can't let me forget. It hurts, but I'll be okay. But damn, that tooth tasted so good soon. Gotta love the taste of your own tooth with blood in the morning. It's hard to hide a smile when plans unfold perfectly. The body was here waiting for me when I arrived at the morgue. Staring down at the pallid corpse of Junpei Matsumoto fills me with more satisfaction than I thought possible. The dog is dead and my early morning encounter with his executioner wasn't just some fever dream born from wishful thinking. Kojiro, she can fix me. Honestly, she's gonna make him worse. She already has made him worse, and she's just gonna keep making it even worse. Kojiro's poetry gives. I'm 14, and this is deep energy. Honestly, it does. It really does. It reminds me of myself when, yeah, I was, like, 14 and, like, super, like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, moody and stuff. His body is real with stab wounds, deep, clean, piercing cuts but these injuries were not inflicted by a knife i'm not for i'm no forensic pathologist but the wounds are too thin and too deep each intrusion is about the width of a chopstick daddy was killed by chopsticks though <laughs> never can rule everything out though my gaze pans down to his body looking for anything of interest the rest of his form looks ordinary nothing to note i'll zip up the bag and now return to his alloc return him to his allocated cold chamber might take him out once in a while to have a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Junpei was kind of a douche, though. I don't know if he really deserved all that, though, man. He was kind of a douche, but also... I don't think he's the worst character in this game. As I raise the zipper, covering his legs and groin, I have to shift his arms to fit them within the HRP. And then I flinch, and my hands instinctively retra retract from the cadaver. I'm used to the ice-cold touch of a body, fresh from the containment chamber. The sensation of lifelessness, or lifeless, preserved flesh. Thus, it wasn't the sensation of touch that caused me to startle. It was the sight of something out of the ordinary. Something I'd somehow missed during my initial observation. Oh. Junpei's fingers. Five thick, meaty, ew. Five thick, meaty digits on each hand. Ten perfectly intact, dead, but otherwise healthy fingers? Oh, is it a fake? What? It was only days ago that I pierced two of his fingers, his thumb and his pointer finger, using cheap metal cutlery. I can't forget the distinct feeling of plunging those implements through flesh and bone, pinning his fingers to a table. The corpse before me shows no evidence of ever being injured in such a manner. Nobody can heal wounds like that without medical attention. Even then, stitches and scars will remain <laughs> no thick. <laughs> the chat why. But Junpei Matsumoto's digits are 100% intact and puncture-free. Interesting. Interesting. Come to think of it, didn't I snap another few of his fingers in half that time I confronted him outside his apartment? I was wondering that too. I was like, that wasn't that long ago. But like, how many, how many Junpeis are there? I'm sure I did. I crushed the bones with my own fist. But this corpse's hand doesn't show signs of that either. Oh my god, so Aoi is not even killing people. She's literally just sending them to Hawaii and like, you know, having people replace the bodies. You know what I mean? What a queen. She's saving them from Corpse Girl. Slay or don't slay Aoi. Serve Aoi? But she's that's her plan. That's her master plan. She's just sending them to Hawaii, okay? What a queen. Hmm. On a whim, I pull up my phone and open noise. I navigate to Junpei Matsumoto's profile. I load a few profile pictures, swipe through them one by one. Put my phone right next to Junpei's head, comparing the similarities between Junpei's photos and his dead body. Uh, everything becomes clear immediately. Oh yeah, what was, did he mention anything about the nose? I don't think he mentioned that yet. They at least do the nose? I don't think so. <laughs> His nose is broader in his photos. His lips are thinner, more taut. The corpse in front of me is not Junpei Matsumoto. It's a copy, a clone. Junpei Matsumoto's death was faked for our entertainment. Ah, uh, makes sense though. Cause I was like, I mean, they would, I could see them like, you know, wanting to fill out every request they get, but at the same time, I could see them being more smart, you know, if they know that we're just like doing it to watch, you know? 
The body lying on the ground in front of the Herald was planted there. Before we arrived, planted to convince us that Junpei had met his maker. The Herald did not kill Junpei. The Herald simply used one of the corpse girl's tricks and produced a carbon, car carbon coffee body. All in order to fool myself and Noriko. As this revelation settles in my mind, I come to another conclusion. The morgue being robbed was no coincidence. I can almost guarantee that the cadaver used to replicate Junpei's death was stolen from this very place. A weapon of deception. Stolen and turned against us. And the morgue was targeted before- oh fuck. Before Noriko's movement in advance. Is that even possible? All I know for sure is that this dog is still out there, still skulking around, working for his master. This is starting to get interesting. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. I haven't seen Tomoe for a while. Where's best okay. girl? I think I'm up to date. I need a palate cleanser after all this Kojura and Noriko. I guess it was a good thing you decided to prod and poke Junpei's corpse, as you put it. Guess so. I thought you were just being your usual morbid self. Taking corpses for your own use. Whatever that may be. Don't know what to tell you. Well, I'm glad you acted. Faking Junpei's death. What's their end goal? What did they really accomplish by pulling such a stunt? There's a million possible answers to that question. Can't know the real truth, not yet. The obvious answer would be that they wanted to deceive <clears throat> us. Make us think we have the upper hand. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense for, like, literally the competition, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it makes sense they wouldn't want to follow our requests. I came to the same conclusion. It's just Noriko that's all weird about, like, Corpse Girl has to do everything even if it fucks me over. They think they've fooled us, but we know better. Can we use that to our advantage? Don't know. Sometimes you're helpful, and other times you're just... What? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> My god, they're fighting. It irritates me when I withhold my thought. It irritates her when I withhold my thoughts. Sometimes I act like this just to elicit a reaction from her. She's cute when she's pissed off. They're so fucking toxic. I don't know what we should do next. Not that I even need to say that. We're kind of at a dead end, right? Kind of. Corpse Girl's website has gone silent. No one is requesting deaths anymore. But if I'm to believe the news, there are still dozens of people being killed all around the city, which means the human removal service is still as active as ever. Don't beat yourself up. Don't have any cadavers at the morgue anyway. Can't exactly fulfill any requests. True. She sighs and rubs her eyes. Despite her tired, exhausted appearance, she's still dealing with recent events rather well for Noriko at any rate. Does she even work at her job anymore? Did she just quit? I guess I guess she did since she's just like living here now. Can you let me know when the morgue starts filling up again? Like how is she paying them either? Sure. Hang on. There is one body there. Fake Junpei. <laughs> yeah. Not much use though, I suppose. No, not really. Yeah, where are the authorities, damn it? I know, right? Keep me updated. Okay. She rubs her eyes again and tries to hold back a yawn. You look wrecked. Sorry. Things are tough right now. It'll get better. You'll cause some deaths soon enough. <laughs> Don't worry, sweetie. People will start killing themselves again. I just know it. My words have the strange effect of actually cheering her up slightly. I know we're not exactly the most normal people, <laughs> you think. The things we do, the causes we devote ourselves to, they are wrong. There's no other way to put it. We're fucked up. I know this. I trust that Noriko knows this as well. We're morbid, sick, disgusting freaks. Noriko slaughters innocent people in the name of Corpse Girl. Her fabricated idol or alter ego or whatever the fuck she, whatever the fuck she's on, dude. As for me, I'm just a simp. I've got as much blood on my hands as Noriko does. She likes to believe she's innocent, but the truth is that she's just as guilty as any killer. I don't see myself the same way. I know for a fact that the things I've done are enough to put me behind bars for the rest of my life. I don't try to convince myself that I'm something I'm not. I'm a criminal, plain and simple. Okay, at least at least he's self-aware, you know? But, Noriko is a kindred spirit. We're connected on some level that I don't expect the average person to understand. You guys just don't get it, okay? We're bonded by the things we've done, by the death we've witnessed. Looking at her now, this tired girl, worn thin by stress. I can't help but be reminded of Shizuko that I'm totally over, by the way. 
I messed up with Shizuko. I didn't take the time we had together seriously. I took it all for granted. I won't take make the same mistake with Noriko. I'll make her mine. I'll prove my love to her every day. Perhaps that will convince her to not discard me when I run out of you. <laughs> Bro, can you just like go on Tinder? Can you just like, please just go on Tinder? Like, you don't have, like why? You don't have to do this. You don't have to do all this. You're a good looking dude. Want something to eat? She glances at me and opens her mouth, but weighs her words before speaking. Thanks, but yeah, I don't. I like. How much is she even eating? You know me. Yeah. I know. Of course I know. I know so much about her. She doesn't eat, not unless she absolutely has to in order to live for another day. Something light? A salad? I want to share a meal with you. I... I can't. I feel like she's gonna die of starvation, dude, before this game even concludes, man. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Wait, the chat. Kojiro, but I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. That really is him. I do, I get it. It's Noriko. Her convictions are what I admire the most about her. What would it say of her character if I could break her convictions with a simple invitation? We should get married. Huh? <laughs> what? A few days ago, you said you'd be mine. Um, uh, I told you something like that, yeah, but that had a condition. You had to kill Junpei. Yeah, I was kind of wondering, I was like, he obviously, like, didn't kill Junpei. So when she interrupted, I kind of felt like she was just trying to get out of, like, marrying him and, you know, being with him forever and ever and ever. Mm. <laughs> She's right, I did manage to kill him. Does that mean I don't, I don't deserve her? Maybe there's something else I could do? Let me prove that I'm a man you can love. I'll think about it. Oh my god. Okay. I'll take that. It's better than an outright no. Maybe you should get going for now. I need to sleep. Okay. I'll leave her be. Should get some sleep myself. Later. Bye, Kojiro. I feel like all she can probably do is sleep. Like, she's so weak. Something about the way she says my name sends a chill down my spine. It's not a pleasant sensation. It's not a feeling of elation or excitement. It's uncomfortable, disconcerting. It's like she's literally killing herself by starving herself. Like, I don't know. And he's like, I admire that about her. I'm like, if you love someone, I feel like you'd want to get them help. You know? Like, you want to help them. Like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. I shrug it off and leave the factory. Jesus Christ. They are so fucked up. Oh, whoa. Um. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else I expected. It just popped out of nowhere, though. I was like, it doesn't look like him, but younger. Uh, but not <laughs> How is this man free and walking the streets? He dragged her corpse across the street, and nobody was like. <laughs> Maybe I'll call the cops. No, nobody nobody said anything. They just were like, no, that's cool. Whatever. Slay, I guess. <laughs> they were, it was just all, you know, Sims. They hadn't played as Ark yet, so they were all, uh, all Koji Sims. They're like, yes, Koji, slay. <laughs> oh my god, no. Omnipresent Starfall down bad. <laughs> he looks so pretty. But look what he's doing. <laughs> I have an uncanny vivid recollection of dragging Shizuko's corpse through the street on the night she was killed. I had witnessed the collision. Oh! Oh, he actually didn't kill her? I watched, speechless, as the asshole ran her down, drove away. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Okay, I thought for sure he killed her, honestly. The asshole who ran her down, drove away like a coward. Oh, wow, that's sad. It took me a while to gather the strength to collect her crumbled body from the asphalt. By then it was around 7 o'clock. The sun had set, but a sliver of light still peeked over the horizon, tinting the sky with an orange hue. People kept screaming at me. <laughs> you think? Wasn't doing anything wrong. Wasn't trying to smear Shizuko's blood on the sidewalk. That is... God, that's so traumatizing, though. I can't even imagine how, like, awful that would be. Just wanted to take her home. She was hurt or dead. No point leaving her in the middle of the road. She didn't comment on my suit. Got all dressed up just for her. Didn't comment on the ring, even as I slipped it on her stiff finger. Oh my god. I was like, I feel like the day he proposed or something. 
She didn't even say a word about the size of the diamond. I mean, just kind of dead, homie. Like, I don't know what you, like, you know. But she made a unique sound as we walked. It, it rings in my ears now and then, especially when I catch myself in quiet moments. <laughs> Don't know what it was at the time, but punctured the silence between my heavy footsteps. Turns out the sound was caused by the fabric of her dress, stretching and ripping against the coarse texture of the... <laughs> like, I understand him being traumatized, but it feels very disrespectful to just, like, drag her corpse along the sidewalk. Is he just trying to be to Lulu? Like, maybe if I drag her and pretend to go on like a romantic walk she'll still be alive on his birthday too yeah i think i remember that being the case she made that sound for the entire journey home my footsteps thud thud shizuko skirk skirk people screaming ah kya the cockafanny of irritating noise assaulted us during the entire expedition silence didn't rear its head until we arrived at our destination Wasn't easy getting her up the stairs to my apartment. I'd carried her in my arms dozens of times, always effortlessly. But during that final ascent, Shizuko's weight exceeded the limits of my muscles. Had no choice but to drag her up slowly, a single step at a time. Wasn't my fault her head cracked against... Ugh, bro! You're just like, oh man. Oh god, you're messing up her body. Like, I... Uh... Once we were inside, I finally had the opportunity to examine the damage. It's like, hey, hey, sweetie, you're good, right? You can you can get up now, right? Skirt, skirt, no. Her limbs were flattened, her chest had caved in, ribs crushed. Oh, God, and ground into a fine dust. Remarkably, her beautiful face remained unmarred. She looked at peace, despite having died in pure agony not long before. And that was the last time I kissed her. I planted my lips on hers and found comfort in the slight warmth that still remained. And then I closed her eyes. That's really sad, though, honestly. I honestly just thought for sure he killed her. Oh my god. That is, that is really sad. But man. Ah, ah, wild. The memory of that event is so clear that thinking about it feels like I'm reliving it again and again for the first time. The pain hasn't dulled. But I'm glad I don't live in that apartment anymore. Climbing those steps every day would only serve to remind me of- You didn't have- to, You did not have to drag her corpse that way, honestly. You didn't have to do that part. Climbing those steps every day would only serve to remind me of dragging her corpse behind me. You really didn't have to do that part. You could have called the police, come on. I cut myself free from the chains that shackled me to her, but I can never destroy the memories. I think they'll haunt me to the end of my days. Perhaps that's why I'm so desperate to fill the void she left in my life. I'm desperate to distract myself with love from another. I don't know why, but there's a part of me that still thinks he's the one who like ran over her. And then he was like, after Lord's like, who would do this? Like, I don't know, he's just so psycho. It's kind of hard for me to like, even like his tragic backstory, I'm like still kind of side eyeing of like, Honestly, sometimes I really do feel like he drove over her and he was just like, Whoa, how did this happen? That's crazy. And yet, because like he almost still seems like, I don't know, like bitter towards her. Like, I feel like most people who lose like, you know, their lover in like a really tragic way like that. You know, it's like they kind of like, I don't know, like, you know, there's no, like, resentment, I feel like. For most people, it's just, like, a sadness. You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird that he seems to resent her so hard. I wanted to hold her cold, lifeless corpse in my body and simply waste away so I could join her in the afterlife. In fact, I was so attached to her corpse... <laughs> I did something I'd never done before! Not once! In all my history of... All my history of toying with dead bodies... I decided to keep her. Is she in the closet now? I don't know whether it was out of despair or depression or desperation. Don't truly really know why I decided to do such an odd thing. Possessed by a single disturbing idea, I emptied out the small storage closet in that apartment, discarded everything within. 
And then carefully, delicately, lovingly, lovingly. Oh, wow, so sweet. Play Shizuko inside the dark space. Okay, 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 okay. Nobody, like, he was dragging her for so long. And it's like, the blood would lead to his apartment. Nobody the next day was like, hum. It's so interesting. There's a blood trail going up the stairs into this one apartment. Like, nobody was, like, knocking on the door. Like, hey, maybe we should, like, see what's going on in there. Like, I guess they could have looked through and not found her body. But that's just such a weird... It's, like, literally leaving a trail to, like, uh, you know, where it is. She stood up against the wall, almost casually, almost like she was alive. I held her in place with some rope fastened to the wall, a loop around her neck, and a few bindings around her waist. She sagged a little, but it wasn't overly noticeable. There, Shizuko stood before me, though her gaze was lowered. I could almost fool myself into thinking she wanted to greet me. Or she wanted to simply say goodbye. Goodbye. Something I never considered saying to her. But I knew it was time. Time to say goodbye to her. And to say goodbye to myself. To me that shared a life with her. The me that lived in shame of the things I'd done. Into that small storage room, I piled the evidence of my guilt. Okay. He was definitely stalking her and shit, too. Because, like, all these pictures on the wall. Those, like, his little creepy Hey Arnold room. All the macabre and sickening paraphernalia I'd collected over the years. Found a new home within that dark space. Photos of corpses. Oh, never mind. Tomes written about the embalming and mummification. Countless books by noble... Oh, that's why he was reading those books. Oh my gosh. I guess that makes sense. Countless books by Noble Sinclair that the author, that author I held so dearly to my heart. Everything and everyone that made up Kojiro found itself inside the room. And with one last look at the girl, I slammed the door and locked it tight. And left it there as a gift for my new waifu, Noriko. The ceremonial act of locking away everything I once loved had a cathartic effect. But the moments after, that aren't as clear in my mind. I know that I sealed the room and concealed the door. Uh, it is still in there. <laughs> but I don't recall the effort that went into doing so. Don't know. I don't know that I decided to leave the apartment behind, but I don't recall talking to the land. I know I decided to leave the apartment behind, but I don't recall talking to the landlord. I know that I tried to move from being the person I once was, but I don't know how much I truly changed. Jesus. Jesus, save me. <laughs> save me from this game. Because just over a year later, I'm still in this world, taking part in truly disturbing acts. I'm still obsessed with the dead. And I'm just, and I'm still fawning over Shizu. I mean, Noriko, who I love so much. Maybe people can't change after all. Maybe I've been fooling myself all this time into thinking that I'm different now. But I'm not. I'm the same as I always was. I'm still just Koji. Maybe that's okay. I'm still just Koji Koji. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this game's a lot, Good dude. Good news for you. Really? What is it? A few new cadavers were in the morgue when I arrived tonight. Oh. Also, I was thinking... What about? Something funny. We went to such lengths to make sure we didn't get caught stealing cadavers from here. And? Well, it's amusing that the entire place was ransacked by the Human Removal Service, but no one ever investigated. Yeah, it's so fucking weird. How would nobody investigate that? No one here seemed to really care. Like, what are the police doing in this world? We tried so hard to cover our tracks. Being careful about every single corpse we lifted. Then those assholes just waltzed in and stole everything without any repercussions. Yeah. It makes me sick. I want to bring them down. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> how many bodies came in today? Four. Not a great deal, but a start. Give it a week or two and this place should be packed once more. Okay. Good. Thanks for letting me know. Of course. See you. Later. Since I already cataloged the new arrivals, I figure I can relax for the rest of my shift. I plan myself on the uncomfortable steel chair parked near the morgue's entryway. A few moments later, I'm lost within the flashing lights from my phone screen. Don't know how long I zoned out for, but when I come to, Noriko's name is in 
blazoned across my screen. Strange for her to call me now, since we just spoke before. Yo. You're not going to believe this. Uh-oh. Try me. Somebody requested a death. Oh. Oh, uh, that explains the excitement in her voice. Congrats. It's been a while. Oh my god, is it gonna be him? It's been far too long. I thought we were done for. I thought Corpse Girl's website had fallen into obscurity. I guess it wouldn't really matter anyways. Happy for you. Kojiro, we can't let this slip through our fingers. We need a victory here. This new request has to be fulfilled immediately. Hmm. I want this victim to die with a bang. I want his death to propel Corpse Girl's name back into the limelight. Roger. Awaiting your orders. I'm sending you the Vic's photo. Get me a corpse that matches his appearance, just like usual. Only got a handful of bodies here, remember? Going to be a long shot. Do whatever the fuck you have to do. <laughs> Her icy cold command leaves no room to be misinterpreted. Be I wonder what Shizuko's personality was like. It's gotta be so much better than Noriko's. <laughs> Noriko, open the door, please! <laughs> Noriko, open the door! <laughs> oh god. Call in and I immediately receive a message from Noriko. That song probably would fit for them. <laughs> open it, well, I don't know, Noriko's... It's, She's super psycho. Opening it up reveals the photo of Corpse Girl's latest victim. Male, mid-30s or so. Fairly unremarkable guy. Let's see what bodies are in stock. I heave myself off the steel chair and log into the morgue's computer. Scanning through the inventory only takes a few seconds. There are five cadavers here in total. The four that arrived today plus Junpei. Looking through the details or the Junpei lookalike reveals that what that of the five there are three, three are female and two are male. I immediately rule out using Junpei that uh, Junpei's lookalike corpse for this request. It's heavy sad body and doesn't match the victim at all. I'll need to take a look at the other male, but I don't like the odds of finding a match. I navigate to the cold chambers and open up the cash housing, the corpse in question. The cold air spewing forth from the open compartment fogs up my glasses. I calmly remove them, wipe them against my coat, and return them to the rifle place. After unzipping the body bag, I'm met with a face of death, a sight I've become more and more accustomed to after many long years of working. This guy is just an average looking as Corpse Girl's victim. Seems like the type of person you wouldn't notice in a crowd. He'd simply be a blur against the sea of bodies. It might be exactly what we need. I compared his features to those of the photo in the photo. Ah, those of the victim in the photo. He looks similar. Couldn't exactly mistake him for a relative, but. Maybe with a bit of Noriko's makeup handiwork, you might pass off as a close enough copy. <sighs> only one problem. Unzipping the body back further reveals this guy only has one arm. Oh god, we have to like stitch another arm to him or something? Ugh. His left arm has been sev severed just below the elbow, leaving a surgical stump. It's something that he has clearly lived with for years because the area in question is clean. Probably had a prosthetic limb before being moved to the morgue. This particular feature is a deal breaker. Too hard to convince the victim that this is his own corpse if it's missing a limb. Although, perhaps Noriko could factor the missing limb into the cause of death. If I bo bloodied the stump a bit, it could be made to look like he lost an arm before he died. I reach for my phone and call Noriko back, getting sick of the chit chat. You find a suitable corpse? Almost. Got a guy about the same age and build. Plain face. Need some work, but... Great! I'll send Tomoe over with the van right away! What are y'all doing in chat? One, two, three, one... Wow, look at all these dead bodies. <laughs> what are y'all... Are, are you guys singing in chat right now? Just one thing. <laughs> what? The body is missing an arm. Oh, that is a problem. Yeah. Can you edit the corpse photo so that the victim is missing an arm? Make it look like it got chopped off before he died. That way, when he receives the actual corpse, he'll be expecting a missing limb. No. Oh, bye, Anna. Thanks for coming to the stream. No. I'm already in the middle of making the photo. I'm not changing it now. Oh my god, this bitch. Then I don't know what to tell you. Don't have any other suitable bodies. Hey, just figure it out, Koji. Make it work, Kojiro. <laughs> this bitch, dude. That venomous tone again. What can I do? I'm not going to roam the street and kill someone that looks like the Vic. Come up with something else then. Hell, chop your own arm off and attach it to the corpse. I don't care what you do. I cannot with her. How does how does he still like her? I need the body within the hour. If you let me down, I'll never be with you. I guess he just loves Shizuko so much, you know, and she looks like her. Our relationship is tied to Corpse Girl's fate. If you let her down, you'll let me down. And I don't like being let down. My phone beeps twice, as if to protest Noriko, abruptly ending the call. Fantastic. 
<laughs> oh my god. She likes backing me into corners. Yeah, I feel like she is getting worse. Like, uh, okay, she's getting annoying as fuck. Yeah, I feel like she's getting, like, more power trippy or something, honestly. Like, I don't know. I just feel like she's always, like, just figure it out, Koji. Just do all the work while I sit here and do nothing but Photoshop. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? It's clear that she doesn't really have any intention of being with me. She's using me, dangling the promise of something I desire right in front of me. Okay, you finally get it, bestie. And yet... Stop, get some help. I need to have her. I need to prove to her that she should be with me. I lower my glasses and gently rub my brow with my fingers. She's never gonna be with you, homie. She keeps putting it off. Shit. She does not like you, just get a clue. I got an idea, but I can't believe I'm about to do this. I slide my glasses back up and adjust them so they're comfortable, comfortable once more. I swear to God, if he cuts off his own arm, I'm gonna flip out. Fetch the mobile mortuary lift and angle it underneath the tray protruding from the open gold chamber. With a great deal of effort, I detach the tray from the chamber. It rests upon the top of the mortuary lift, allowing me to wheel the corpse across the morgue. After pushing it halfway across the open room, I lift the wheels, come to a stop directly underneath one of the ceilings at glaring fluorescent lights. Like, how hard would it be to Photoshop out the arm? Like, I cannot. With that done, I turn and rummage around in a cabinet. I sort, of, I sort through a number of tools until I find what I'm looking for. Clutching the sterile implement in a shaking hand, I return the corpse lying across atop the steel tray. I roll up the sleeves of my coat. Oh, no, oh god. Here it goes. No! He's not! He's fucking not doing this right now! You've gotta be kidding! No! What the fuck is wrong with you, Koji?! Jeff, is this still your man? Is this still your man? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god! What is wrong with you? <gasps> I don't need to see it. I don't need to see it, homie. We, we don't gotta see it. Well, the metal bone saw digs into my soft flesh of my arm. I have to grip my teeth and retain from screaming. Angle the blades so that it cuts away from my elbow. No need no need to leave that intact. The cutting process is pure agony. I what the fuck, dude? I keep my breathing steady and try to focus on something <laughs> Try to focus on my girl, Noriko, my girl, the love of my life. If she does not fucking date him after this, dude, he'll probably just be like, it's okay, girl. I still love you. Vomit. Something my brain can handle. Wall aflame with pain. I begin to count once. I cannot. I thought. I don't, like. Ah! I count the seconds that it takes for the jagged metal saw to reach each bone. 15, 16. Still just flesh and. Oh my. This is so fucked. Ah! 20, 21, 22, 23. Count sheep in your brain, bestie. They get reach Sanu after 24 seconds, but it's hard to tell because there's a terrible numbness that is somehow worse than the original searing agony. The fingers clutching the saw begin to slip due to perspiration. It's getting harder to even hold the tool. After some 32 odd seconds, I, the saw hits the bone. Ah! I slide it back and forth, cutting into the dense matter with a much, as, as much strength as my failing body can muster. Vomit and drool have soaked the front of my coat and begin to smear together with blood. It's forming a shallow pool at the feet, at my feet, and the stench of, oh god, the stench of mixing liquid threatens to overwhelm my senses. Kind of the seconds has become infinitely more difficult. 43, 44, 47, 20 seconds so far. No, it's been longer than that. Can we get off this screenshot? It has been... It, must, it has to have been a minute by now. I've been sawing into my own arm for a full minute, but the blade still hasn't cut through all the bone. Don't recall when I fell to my knees. Is he just gonna die from doing this at this point? Don't recall when I stood back up. Don't recall running my slimy fingers through my hair or when flecks of blood splattered against my glasses or when my bladder... <laughs> or when I peed myself. Okay, now he gets to have his black room memory scream screams cries pisses himself throws up Oh my god, this is definitely uncomfy Brie. I don't think I don't think you can do a comfy check right now Don't ever recall why I'm doing this. I was like, I don't know. Should I like turn the screen off for a little bit? <laughs> 
while I read this? YouTube's probably gonna flag this, man. Is it for Shizuko? It's because I love her? No. Noriko. It's for Noriko. Actually, it's for Corpse Girl. Have to prove him worthy of her. Have to be loved by her. There's nothing else for me. 97, 98. As, I count, as my count reaches 99 seconds, my right arm... Ah! Falls to the wet, tiled floor, flopping like a dead fish against the deck of a boat. Uh, a little of a groan, and what can only be called relief, and I slump in on myself, resting in the... He's literally just gonna fucking die here, dude. Can we please go to Tomoe's POV? I need a palate cleanser. I want to go to Shinya's or Tomoe's POV. And it's just them on a date, chilling and having a good time watching Netflix. They're just watching like Too Hot to Handle or some trashy shit on Netflix. A little to grow of what can only be called relief. And I slump in on myself, resting in a pool of foul liquid. My vision's blurry. My breathing's ragged. The same part of... Like, how could you even be relieved? in like a situation like this like you're literally bleeding out oh my god same part of my conscious knows i need to treat my wound I need to apply a turn quit or casterize the damage or i'm just gonna bleed out and die on the floor of my own morgue but a quiet voice in my mind the very same that drove me to such an extreme measure urges me to finish my work He's gonna sew the arm before he fucking fixes it? I try to push myself up off the ground using both arms, but of course... I fall flat on my face when my right arm fails to reach, react to my mental instructions. I think the lens is in my glasses, smashed against the tiles because my eyes seem to be bleeding now. A second attempt at pushing off the ground is more successful. My left arm is somehow strong enough to hoist my barely responsive body. I sway and stagger around aimlessly before collecting myself enough to attempt to fish my severed arm off the ground. Luckily, I managed to grasp a blood and vomit soaked wrist of my former limb with my. Ah! Drag myself towards the lift. It holds. Oh my god! I cannot. I cannot, dude. But I don't think this. I didn't think this through. I don't really know how to. <laughs> I don't really know how to attach a severed limb! What the fuck are you on about? I bludgeon the corpse stump with my useless arm. Couldn't, like, you just, you, like, why would you not fix yourself? For, why would you do this if you don't even fucking know how to, like, attach it in the first place? And then you're trying to, like, figure it out while you're bleeding out his last words are saws. <laughs> it probably will be, honestly. Probably. I bludgeon the corpse's stump with my useless arm, trying to find some point of connection that will magically fuse the limb to the corpse. It's hopeless. And as I madly flail the arm around, I can't help but laugh at the whole situation. Of course I can't. It. <laughs> that was so silly of me. I'm just like so silly and like quirky. <laughs> Isn't that cute, guys? <laughs> I can't attach my arm to this corpse. <laughs> Oh, whoa! He cut his right arm. The corpse is missing its left arm. No! <laughs> nah, nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me! I cut off my right arm! I'm so silly. It's just so fucking silly and quirky. He's just in a goofy mood, guys. That is so funny. Is he? Okay, if he cuts... Okay, I'm gonna have to turn off the screen if he cuts off his other arm, honestly. Because I don't want this video to get flagged. <laughs> I cut off my right arm! I'm so silly. <laughs> Good one. I throw my useless detached arm behind me and rest my weary body against the mortuary lift. Coming to my laughter is the laughter of someone else nearby. I have to listen really intently to confirm that I'm not just hallucinating. But I'm certain that somebody just walked into my line of vision, even if they are nothing more than a dark, blurred silhouette. Oh, bro. You don't look so hot. Oh, that's again! Cut off your own arm? Is that fucking- 
fucking Junpei. You fucking Mitch ass bitch. D I hate this motherfucker. Thank you, Finastro. Kojiro pulling a lumpy from Happy Trail. God, I almost forgot about that show. Dude, you unlocked a memory that I thought was gone so, so long ago, dude. Thank you for the dono. I know the voice, but I can't place it right now. I know that fucking douche anywhere. It's not my voice, it's not Noriko's. You want me to take the pain away? Yes, please. I'd give anything to remove the pain. I can't voice my consent. My mouth is dry and my jaw locked in place. Here. Nothing a little fire can't fix. The figure comes closer. He smells foul like a dog. Yeah, definitely. Definitely our boy Jumpy. Like a dog that has been bathed in gasoline. A dog. The heavyset figure that I now assume is Junpei Matsumoto has crouched over me. The smell of gasoline intensifies as he pours some sort of cold liquid all over my clothes. Hey, I gotta light this place up. But you guys didn't get the hint when we stole all of your corpses. Well, you ain't gonna be nothing without your precious more. And Corpse Girl is gonna wither away without her right hand man. <laughs> right hand. I <laughs> get it, bro, because he's like totally cut it off, man. Bro, that was so epic. Get it, Kojimbo? Oh my god! Kojimbo! My boy, my boy Kojimbo. Okay, th this is why he gives me Mitch vibes, dude. He's about to murder this motherfucker, and he's calling him Kojimbo. Oh my god, rip Kojiro. Yeah, I think it's I think it's over for a little Koji Koji, unfortunately. And thank you, Nikki, for the donation. Oh my god. The way he deliberately misrepounces my name really bothers me. It bothers me so much that the anger bullying inside me gives me strength to open my mouth once more. <laughs> one last, one last word. Sauce. It's Kojiro. Oh. Sure, bro. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Fuck it. This fucking. <laughs> sure, bro. <laughs> whatever, bro. It's like whatever, dude. Sleep tight. Oh my god. Dog lifts his body and disappears into oblivion beyond my sight. The unmistakable sound of a match being struck should fill me with panic, but I feel strangely calm. Yeah, I don't know. He probably just wants to die to go back to his actual girl. Warm glowing tendrils of flame flicker around the outskirts of my vision. Fire. The entire morgue is alight. The acrid smell of smoke quickly covers up the odor of gasoline. Fire. I lost my family. Oh, hey, here's the family trauma dump. I lost my family to fire so many years ago. Oh, that's a fucked up way to go. Maybe it's fitting that I should perish in the same way. Fire. I hate fire. I hate it and I fear it. Ah, man, that's fucked up. Fire. It's everywhere surrounding me. It's like, man, it's like, I don't know, dude. It's like, I feel bad for him at the same time. He's such a fucking awful person. <laughs> Maybe it is a bad end. I'm starting to wonder, too. And thank you, um, uh, Bree. So, uh, Jeff, about your man, I think you'll- I think you'll fix him? I would also like to know, Jeff. I would also like to know. Thanks for the dono, Bree. Signy stench of burning flesh permeates my nostrils, and I realize it's the smell of my severed arm being incinerated before me. Fire. I close my eyes. Really sleepy right now. Lost a lot of blood, after all. Sorry, Noriko. No! He didn't say sauce! Are you fucking- No! No fucking way his last words are sorry! No! Guys, this is fake Kojiro. Obviously fake Kojiro. The real one's in Mexico right now. Sorry I loved you. Ugh. Man. Is this a bad end? Or did he just die? Is that just it? I'm waiting. Act, no, act two clear. Act two clear? Oh, we're playing as Owie now? Uh, okay, 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 girl. Or should I say Corpse Girl 2? One month later, got another month time skip. Man, I did like Kojiro though. Well, I he was really creepy, <laughs> fucked up. But I did like him, I think. <laughs> I did like him. <laughs> oh God, dude. Oh my gosh, now it's time for Owie's arc, I guess. Dude, I kind of wonder if we can really finish the game in this one. I don't know how long Owie's is, though. I guess, um, MSC, if you're still here, if you could let me know if you think I should just go ahead and finish it today, or if I should maybe do Owie's next stream. I'm not totally sure. Thank you, KD. What an episode for me to rejoin on. I <laughs> love you, Weeby. <laughs> oh, thank you, are you too? God, that, this is a really, this is definitely a wild one to join back on. But thank you for the dono. Appreciate you. Oh, man. 
Oh gosh, this game really is super nuts. I really wish I could scream at him. I really, really want to scream. We can finish today, but I'll double check. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I can play a little bit longer. I was like, I kind of want to just because of like, you know, how far we've gotten into this. Man, that means it wasn't a bad ending though. Koji really did die that. He really did die that way, dude. I really wish I could scream at him. I really, really, really want to scream. But he's one of my best customers. I wish he would just take the rules seriously. He said, I said no free refills. The squeak of my voice even surprises me. Gosh, I've never yelled at a customer before. It feels so liberating. I feel free. The customer hangs his head. He looks as guilty as I feel on the inside. Oh gosh, I should have raised my voice at him. This is gonna be like her, um, her villain, like backstory basically. I'm going to get fired for this, I just know it. Sorry, Miss Owie. I'll never ask again, I promise. <laughs> Make sure you don't. <laughs> That's it. I don't let Dylan let him see you back down. Be firm, girl. Girl. Stand up for yourself. The customer scurries away and I nearly faint from the adrenaline pounding through me. What a rush. I can't believe I didn't back down. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. When I feel like I've calmed down, I fetch a cloth and begin to wipe down some tables. This place hasn't been too busy lately. I still shake when I think about the incident last month that drove away a lot of customers. That man, that tall, scary man with glasses and an evil- Girl, I know, I know you're whatever, the Herald or whatever, this, the Slay, the Slayer, the, I'm trying to combine Slay with Herald. Well, what's a good nickname we could come up with for her? Herald, the Serverald, the Slayerald, the Herald, the- Nah, I can't, I can't really think of anything right now. Let me know if y'all think of something. <laughs> oh man, that man was tall, that tall scary man with glasses and an evil face. Here my sweet little Junpei, he cornered him in this fairy cafe and stabbed his fingers with cutlery. What kind of sick freak does such a thing? I know there's something between those two. Oh, I probably got two hours to go? Oh wow. I can't ever forget the time. That man left Junpei all bruised and broken on the ground outside his apartment. Grr! I hate that man! Who does he think he is? Bullying my sweetheart! A pleasant little chime rings out from my pocket. Oh, sl slayer Slayerard? Slayerold? Okay, two hours to go. Uh, I guess I'll think about it. Oh, Harold kind of sounds like Hey Arnold. <laughs> nice. I didn't even think about that. Oh, thank you. This is a random fandom. Oh, hey, random. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I always like, I'm in my villain era and just sets healthy boundaries. Oh, my God. <laughs> Honestly, relatable. Literally me. Slay rolled. I guess we can do slay. I think slay rolled sounds good. Phew. Guess I better get going. Luckily for me, I'm not closing duty tonight. My coworkers will take care of all of that. All I need to do is sign out the employee's app on my phone, and my full shift will be automatically recorded. Then I'll get paid on time, just like usual. I'm trying to think if we have like, I just like talk a lot too, so I'm like two hours. I'm so scared too that this video is gonna get age restricted. I wonder if I can like edit out that scene or something. Just cause like, YouTube can be pretty, pretty severe when it comes to blood. But uh, hopefully it wasn't on the screen long enough. But I was like, man, I don't want to get age restricted at all. I'm kind of like worried about that, thinking about it. Two hours takes longer to play through, honestly. Yeah, I guess we can maybe finish it next week since uh, we do seem like we might still have a decent ways to go. How long have we been playing so far? One, two, 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 three, three, four. Oh my God, we've been playing for almost four hours? Are you kidding me right now? Well, that went by so fast, dude, that's insane. I guess we could probably, I guess maybe it would be good to finish it up tomorrow. I didn't realize I'd been playing so. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd been playing it for so long. Comparing it to time, oh, to another lp -er. Cause yeah, I looked a little bit at like one that was just like the cutscenes itself, but uh, I felt like two hours for that play, like playthrough with no commentary was like four hours for me. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully um, uh, maybe it gets inserted in post. Yeah, that's what I was gonna try to see if I could maybe do, honestly. Yeah, it was like, that or I'd have to just like totally cut out the scene, and I was like, man, that sucks. Bring here would make sense though, since it's been long and you do a lot of being. Yeah, I actually went to a concert last night, so my throat's already a little, <laughs> a little messed up. Yeah, maybe we'll just go ahead and uh, do it next time. We can kind of split it up with the roots, since uh, I think that makes sense. We can see 
Aoi and her Slay Herald villain arc era soon. Next week. I do kind of like, uh, man, ah, it's just been so fun. It's like I just don't want to stop because it's been getting so wild. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I'd feel really sad too if the like finale got age restricted too, which is the other thing I was kind of concerned about. If it dies, the next time I guess we'll just like probably close down OBS to where like uh, something like that comes up on the screen. I can like make sure to censor it out. It just sucks because it's like I want you guys to experience the game fully with me. But at the same time, yeah, YouTube can be pretty, uh, pretty bad. But uh, yeah, anyways. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and stop here. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna start Dog and Rampa Despair Time, and we'll start streaming that one on Sunday. And then we'll finish up this one, and I'm not totally sure exactly what game I'm gonna play after this one. Um, I kinda wanna try out Nausea. That's been one I've been wanting to, like, look into for a while, cause it's kinda like another death game one. I feel like I've heard pretty good things about it. But, um, yeah, just cause, uh, probably would be better to rest my throat a little bit. But thanks guys for coming to the stream! We've had a... Pretty big turnout for this stream too, I feel like, considerably over 300 viewers. It's like, thank you guys, I'm happy to see y'all, uh, you know, interested in this game and uh, enjoying it alongside me. But uh, yeah, thanks guys, I will see you tomorrow and I should hopefully have a video up sometime this week too. I think I've been trying to come up with like a scenario for distrust and like, uh, I'm actually pretty excited about it. It's been like a really hard, tricky video to make, but I think it would be a, uh, it's, I think it's pretty cool because I feel like I figured out some ways that like the game worked that I haven't seen anybody else figure out or like really like overanalyze. So I think you guys will enjoy it, but uh, I think I might have, I don't know, I, I don't know. I'll see, I'll see what you guys think of it, but I'm pretty excited about that video. But yeah, uh, thanks guys for stopping by and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!